All right, so let's uh, go ahead and call this meeting to order. This is the Open Space Advisory Committee for the Town of Superior, uh, June 13th, 2018. Uh, we'll, uh, rather than just plain saying our names and whatnot, let's kind of make this an introduction for our new members as well. Uh, I'm, if you just want to say your name, how long you've been here, anything else you care, care to share, uh, I'm Ken Lish. I'm the chair of the committee. I think I've been on the committee for about five years. Um, yeah. Joel White, committee member, two-ish years, maybe two and a half, somewhere in there. That seems longer. Um, <laughs> maybe it has. I've been in here five years, so maybe it's been four. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun, right? Exactly. Hi, Sean Samuelson. Uh, I've been here slightly less than Ken and definitely less than Patricia. Um, and so I don't know, four and a half. Longer than Joel and everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy Collar, committee member, three, three and a half? I don't know. Around there. Uh, Ryan Welch, vice chair. I've been here now for two years. Loved every minute of it. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Kate Senecal, and I've been here about three, four minutes. <laughs> Welcome. Um, Trisha Dunham, I have been five years, and actually tonight is my last night because you term out after you do ter two terms, but I'll say more about that at the end. So. I'm Allison James. I'm the staff liaison, and I've been here <laughs> over four years. <laughs> I am Mark Lasis, trustee liaison to the board, um, and I've been on this committee since I was elected, so since November, December of 2016. All right. And our new member, Kevin France, uh, could not make it uh, this evening. Uh, however, he is going to try to call in, so at some point tonight we may end up getting him on the line so he can at least listen in. Um, but Kate, really, really good to have you. Welcome to, welcome to the party. Um, with that, any public comment? Um, <clears throat> we've welcomed our new members. So with that, uh, our presentation with the Trust of Public Land. So just want to come up and... Hi, I'm Justin Spring. I work at the Trust for Public Land. Uh, going to give you a little overview of our uh, the organization where I work uh, and then wanted to share some project examples that might help get some of the creative juices going to help a conversation perhaps with you guys about uh, some of the projects that are on your list. Uh, uh, Trace and I met from a distance maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago at the COSA conference uh, and she reached out after that conference to get uh, some ideas about land acquisition assistance and then um, and so this has been this is a good opportunity to kind of connect with you all and uh, make the connection I I did some digging I, I've been at the trust for public land for about 15 years and in the late 90s there was a previous project manager uh, working with the town of Superior uh, and uh, there, there's some interesting notes that maybe are better shared off record but they're kind of <laughs> colorful about the owner of the CenturyLink property before it was level three. You want to? Uh, when it was a private individual who owned the property. Um, n I guess nothing happened then, and then I, I just found some other notes that a colleague was Thank here you. maybe in the mid-2000s uh, as well. So um, kind of interesting to have a, the intermittent history. Um, I live in Louisville. I uh, have two kiddos, and so Superior feels a lot like our community as well. So it's fun to be here. Uh, with that, I'll get into... Can you guys see this okay? I wonder if you Yeah, let's uh, is there Oh, cool. All right. Just don't don't snooze on me. <laughs> uh, so, uh, the Trust for Public Land, we are um, a national conservation group. We're based out of San Francisco. Uh, we have about 400 staff and we work in just about every state. And our mission is as you can see, land for people. It, so we're a little unique from other groups like the Nature Conservancy who are fantastic and we work with them a lot, they are very focused on biodiversity. And so um, our niche, if you will, is that connection between land, land and people. Uh, and just to give you a little overview, some of these are clearly national in scope, the photos. 
uh, but our work is very diverse. So you may uh, encounter the Trust Republic land working in your neighborhood playground uh, to your favorite beach from the family farm up the road, which I think clearly looks like New England to me, uh, to the trail down the street, uh, from the community garden to anywhere you may go to experience nature close at hand. Um, so you can see our work in large part is focused on where people live. Um, here's our mission statement. Uh, again, founded in 1972, and, and our focus is uh, really where people live. And so a lot of that work means that we work in cities and suburbs where 80% of the population resides. Uh, little snapshot, we have about 30 offices now. Uh, I think we're well over 3 million acres protected across the country now. This is a little bit dated. Uh, something like 5,000 projects around the country. Uh, Alaska to Florida, Maine to Virgin Islands. Uh, and our initiatives, where I wanted to focus tonight, uh, involve land protection. So uh, I didn't want to overwhelm you guys. In addition to land protection, we also help communities with what we call conservation finance. So I, I know here in Superior, you already have a dedicated, uh, I think it's a sales tax revenue source for parks, trails, and open space. Uh, I don't believe we were involved with that, but that's something that we help communities with. Um, we were, I think, in the Denver Post today because we're trying to help Denver City Council think through, do they want to refer a measure to the ballot? Um, believe it or not, Denver, city and county of Denver, is just about the only metro area uh, local government that has no dedicated revenue source for parks, trails, or open space. And a huge backlog on undeferred, uh, deferred maintenance, uh, as well as not a lot of uh, capital for new acquisitions. So that's something in our conservation finance realm. Uh, we also have a group of landscape architects that help communities, uh, particularly in and um, urban areas in Denver, Colorado Springs, uh, and elsewhere, we help those communities think about uh, reactivating parks that have been uh, somewhat dormant. Maybe they're not engaging the community the way they were originally intended. And so we go through a public stakeholder process to uh, kind of reimagine what that park could look like with the community that lives there. Uh, we also design playgrounds uh, as part of that effort. Uh, that's a about it for the other service areas, but again, I wanted to focus on the real estate, and so we really break it down to parks for people and our land water. Uh, parks for people is fairly self-explanatory. Uh, again, our, the metric that we use here is what we call the 10-minute walk, and so our <coughs> national goal is to uh, greatly enhance the number of people that are within a 10-minute walk of a quality uh, park, playground, trail, open space, what have you. Uh, and then a little snapshot getting back to Colorado. Uh, this is U Valley Park for those, yeah, I don't know if everyone's been there, it's in Colorado Springs in the northwest quadrant of the city. And if, if you can believe it, this is about a quarter mile from I-25. Hmm. And so I wanna talk about this in a, in a little more detail, uh, but this is an open space project that we help the city of Colorado Springs acquire. And move right into the map here. Uh, oh, is this a laser pair? Let's see. All right. Perfect. Uh, so, again, here's I-25. This is the property in question, owned by Hewlett Packard originally, um, and many different tech firms before that. Um, the existing Ute Valley Park. And so, uh, we were successful with the community to acquire this 200 acres from Hewlett Packard and convey that or sell that to the city of Colorado Springs over a couple of phases. Uh, I thought this is, was particularly relevant um, given that CenturyLink is on your list. Um, and Hewlett Packard, so they have data storage in here, some offices, and then they, ha they basically had this big campus that they no longer used as a campus because there weren't, unfortunately, that many people working on site anymore. Um, at the same time, you had these neighborhoods that have come up over the years where past uh, HP employees live. Um, some retired, some that have changed jobs, we have transitioned, and so there, there's very much a um, emotional connection to this property. HP used to have company picnics out here, um, and the, I think it was Sun Microsystems, some other companies before that. And then because this is a park and this is undeveloped, people you know use this through trespass for many, many years. Uh, I uh, was able to meet with a realty consultant who works at Hewlett Packard. He, he works all over the world. 
and helps them in their real estate matters. And he came to the Trust for Public Land and said, hey, I've got this client, they wanna do right by the community, but they also need to do right by their um, stockholders. So they can't just give this property away. It's 200 acres, it's highly developable. It's zoned for commercial, it's zoned for residential, um, it has pretty good access. Uh, what do you think? And so we approached it as uh, you know, another problem to solve. Could we help the community acquire this and deliver a fair market value to corporate headquarters at HP? And so the uh, short part of the story is we were successful in doing that in large part because of how engaged the community was. The neighborhood created their own friends group as part of this project. Uh, once they knew that uh, there was literally uh, kind of bulldozers on the boundary of the property, there were surveying crews out there, and the neighborhood freaked out. They said, holy cow, we're gonna lose this amenity, this crown jewel that we've taken for granted. We didn't realize it was private and not really open to the public, or if we did, we just turned a blind eye to that. Um, so the Trust Public Land, we put this under uh, contract through an option agreement. We then uh, worked with the City of Colorado Springs to conduct all the typical due diligence from real estate. So we looked at appraisals, phase one, environmental site assessments, the survey work, the title work, and had to deal with all kinds of issues because Hewlett Packard was retaining these parcels and looking to redevelop those ultimately. Uh, so we helped secure uh, some funding through GOCO, Great Outdoors Colorado, the lottery money uh, here in Colorado that we're fortunate to have. Um, I don't know if you saw the state legislature just recently extended the lottery uh, statutory um, uh, approval. So the lottery has continued for, oh gosh, I forget right now if it's 20 years or something like that. That's been extended. GOCO is uh, in, in statute by the voters and so that can't change. Uh, but needless to say, we were able to take uh, a few million dollars from the city, leverage that with about uh, a million plus from Great Outdoors Colorado. And then we, as you can see, had a, about a $400,000 private campaign in the neighborhood. And what I wanted to point out is, while this is the thinnest slice of the pie, it created all the momentum, all the leverage, all the energy in the community. Uh, the, this neighborhood group, this is the, the Friends of Youth Valley Park is what that stands for. We're able to go to uh, corporations in town. They went to uh, SRAM, who is the bike component manufacturer, S-R-A-M. They make uh, rock shocks, and they um, literally test these rock shocks on the property that we purchased. So it's like this outdoor laboratory for them. So they got all behind this, all the biking groups got behind it. We had major donors, we had folks writing $25 checks to $2,000 checks, uh, and, as well as much bigger than that. And at the end of the day, they, they raised, um, I think, $100,000. We matched it with $300,000 that, that we raised at the Trust for Public Land, combined with the, the GOCO grant writing that we did for the city. Um, and it all worked out really well. Um, here's another shot, shot of the property. Uh, so this property, like a, a lot of the open spaces in this area, are just used regularly. You know, hundreds of people every day, regardless of the season. Any questions, by the way, feel free to interrupt me at any point. Not there, okay. You can come back to that if you want. Uh, Real, I did yeah. have one. Back to the funding, did <clears throat> the uh, the blue part, does that represent uh, any funding from Colorado Springs? Yeah, or? sorry, I didn't explain that acronym. Uh, TOPS is their Trails and Open Space funding, so it's their sales tax that's oh, okay. allocated to open space. And so uh, wow. one of the uh, mechanisms, getting back to the phasing, is that, uh, so Hewlett Packard said, hey, we'll sell this for $7 million, but you've got to close in six months. And the city was like, there's no way, we can't do it. Um, and so we, were, we said, well, how about this? We'll, we will buy this as a trust for public land. Uh, we are nonprofit, and we'll purchase the whole thing, and then we'll look to, uh, uh, and part of the reason the city couldn't do it all at once is cash flow issue. They had these mm -hmm. sales tax revenues coming in, but obviously they didn't have seven million in year one. So in year one, we, we bought the whole thing and conveyed this phase in what we call back-to-back -back closing. So we effectively bought seven million dollars of real estate, conveyed out a little under half to the city immediately. We then held on to this phase 
And the city knew that people wanted to use that property, so we engaged in a lease management agreement, which allowed, um, gave us liability protection and gave the city confidence knowing that we weren't gonna uh, pull a fast one and sell that for some use other than open markets. <coughs> so folks were able to get out there, they were able to get a jump start on their management planning. So they did both master plans and management plans. Um, and there's a, right now, a couple years after the fact, a whole new series of trails there. Uh, but that, uh, so it was a really nice way to leverage their money that they had in the bank with future cash flows. So we provided the bridge financing to help them with that. So is it a lease purchase agreement for the rest that you still have then? Or? More or less. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We, we did um, uh, more of a rolling option agreement and then a lease management agreement paired to that. Okay. But if you collapse those, they're basically a lease purchase agreement. Uh, and in somewhat relevant, Superior, I recognize where we are, but uh, wanted to make sure um, uh, you got a chance to see some of our working lands projects. This is in Colorado engaged on working farms and ranches in the east. It might be working forests or in the northwest, uh, but really trying to enhance the ability of those families to stay on the land. And so that is the, the land for people connection is making sure those families aren't forced to sell. And so if we can come forward and offer them another tool to consider, uh, many of these ranching families, and we've all heard the stories, I think the average landowner age is like 63 or 65, and if they don't have heirs or don't have heirs that are interested in taking on the ranching or farming operations, they're in a tough spot. Or maybe they do have heirs that want to take that on, but they can't afford the estate taxes. So uh, a conservation easement is a, uh, a voluntary tool that allows folks to reduce the value of the estate, uh, making it easy to pass on to heirs, and ensuring the land stays uh, preserved forever. Um, so this is uh, kind of a fun project that I just wrapped up near Crested Butte. Uh, so here you've got the town of Crested Butte. This is the Ski Mountain, uh, which is also the town of Mount Crested Butte. And the Trampy Ranch is outlined here in red. This is just the upper portion of the ranch. And we were able to uh, basically, about a $24 million campaign, uh, we were able to get uh, a huge chunk of the conservation easement value donated by the rancher, Bill Trampy, and then um, secured um, a big GOCO grant of $10 million leveraged with some federal grants, uh, private money, money from the town of Crested Butte, um, and a campaign again from you know $10 up to uh, a quarter million dollar gifts. So re I recognize this is a different scale, but we're talking about you know roughly 6,000 acres from Gunnison to Gothic, Gothic is up here, yeah, if you guys have ever cool. been up at yeah. the Rocky Mountain Biological Lab. So what, what attracted us to this project is that it w is clearly part of the character of this community. If you lost Trampy Ranch to development, you would lose a lot of what makes uh, this, what we feel is one of the last great mountain valleys, as special as it is. Uh, some of these folks that have beautiful homes by the ski resort, uh, you know, have afford fantastic views down to the ranch, you have national forest on all sides, great wildlife habitat and connections. And then, uh, just kind of an interesting point, because this comes up a lot, I know with uh, open space programs, uh, conservation easements typically do not have public access. If they're a private working ranch, you don't want to have bikers, hikers interfering mm -hmm. with cattle operations. It's, it's really a case-by-case -case decision of, in terms of the landowner. So Bill Trampy did not want to allow public access um, which was a challenge. It's a challenge raising that kind of money knowing it's going to stay private. But we actually had the Crested Butte <coughs> community come out and write all kinds of letters of support because there's so many trails that go around the property uh, as well as dirt roads where folks bike on, recreate on. Um, so we were able to determine there's about 100, just in what you're looking at here, about 125 miles of dirt road or trail that I have a view of this ranch. And folks were very excited about just preserving that kind of recreational experience you have when you're on the trails. So you, have you guys ever biked 401? Yeah. That's kind of right up Schofield coming down uh, right to Gothic area. Um, this is the Deer Creek Trail right along here. Uh, it's a Brush Creek. So fantastic area. Uh, just another example of leveraging um, the town of Crested Butte's resources with the counties the town of Mount Crested Butte, GoCo, private, etc. So when using uh, conservation easements as a tool, 
is it more difficult to use it when you're buying from a private pro uh, party rather than say uh, like Hewlett Packard over at the Youth Project? Or um, I, I yeah, I would say that's probably a little more common. Um, individual private landowners sometimes can benefit more from the tax benefits associated with conservation easements. Uh, oftentimes, uh, corporate owners or more ownerships closer to the front range. You know, it's more common to see folks just want to sell the fee simple estate, all the, all the rights that they own. Um, here's a little shot of Bill Trampy and his horses, and I think that's mostly it. Oh, let me, um, so some of this came out in the presentation, but I uh, wanted to kind of talk through what, um, what does the Trust for Public Land offer? And if you want to put the lights on, we could put those back on. Cool, thanks, Trace. So we, we really are, uh, you know, we, you've heard our mission. Our mission is about land for people. So we don't come into communities and say, uh, we, we have this set of criteria and these goals for our open space program. Does it match yours? We really see ourselves more as facilitators. Um, and so we're looking to match, uh, you know, your objectives of your open space program uh, with the private landowners that we may, you know, be in negotiations with. So through negotiating, we find out what those landowners are looking, what their bottom line is, and is there a way to match that with the objectives of a public agency partner? Um, so we, you know, across the state, we work with cities, counties, uh, Colorado Parks and Wildlife, obviously GOCO, um, and then all the federal agencies as well. And so in, in all those cases, each relationship's a little different, but the common theme is kind of working to facilitate land protection um, and really implementing the goals and priorities of our partners. Uh, so a little bit more of that there, it's kind of self-explanatory, but happy to answer questions. So how exactly would we put together a deal with TPL and or GOCO? Like if we had identified lands that, you know, we're, we're four square miles, we've got limited opportunities here, um, but they're already identified thanks in part to this com committee. Yeah. Um, so if we wanted to actually partner with you guys. Um, what's the, the proper next step to actually, you know, go about and getting you the information for you to evaluate you know, the potential opportunities and see, you know, what we could come up with and what you guys would be willing to com contribute to any sort of acquisition? Yeah, I, um, it's relatively straightforward. Uh, we don't require any legal agreements or even written agreements. Um, we are working. Um, on our own behalf, we're working as principals. This is sort of the legal statement here. Uh, we, we aren't real estate brokers, so we can't legally work representing a community. Uh, in that sense, we are buyers. So we are negotiating, we are uh, acting as principals and buying real estate in our own interest, uh, taking that risk. But really, we're doing that to implement the community's goals, wherever community that we're working with. Uh, and so, uh, you know, like the example of the Colorado Springs project, Hewlett Packard, uh, we've got a long relationship in Colorado Springs and we knew that was uh, a priority with a simple phone call and they said, go for it, try to get an agreement. So we um, worked all the channels, all the angles, got a property uh, contract in place and then kind of came back and said, all right, let's talk through timelines and next steps and due diligence. Um, and so, I, uh, you know, once, once we're able to secure a deal, then it's kind of off and running. Do you typically take the lead in terms of the negotiations with the landowner? Or does the does your partner do that? Like, how, how exactly does that work? Yeah, we um, <laughs> in almost every case we like to be in the lead um, as a third party, as a nonprofit. We can oftentimes uh, work a good a good price on the property. Uh, we can also offer tax benefits to landowners. Uh, we provide all these services for free to the communities that we work in. And how we cover our costs is that we ask landowners to consider a cash donation to our organization if and when we're successful. So the idea is uh, with landowners, uh, you know, they might be used to paying a real realtor commission. Our donation is something like that. And so we're asking them to support a charity. And typically landowners mm -hmm. have been entitled for a long time. So they're looking at big capital gains taxes or other tax implications of the sale of land. And by uh, selling that land and at the same time making a cash donation, that cash and tax benefit uh, gets collapsed. Uh, and there's 
different ways to look at this. I don't know, do we have accountants in the room? Uh, so they, some people call this an integrated bargain sale, uh, and sometimes that can have preferential tax treatment for the landowner. Other times they might treat the cash gift separately from the land sale, and all depends on their situation. Uh, so that, um, that's where I think we add the most value is if we're in the lead negotiating with landowners. Uh, I, I wish we had easy projects, but typically we get brought in on the really gnarly ones because that's what's left. The low hanging fruit is long gone. <laughs> that's, that's the open space we already enjoy. Uh, and so we typically are brought in with landowners that maybe don't have, maybe have some bad blood with the um, local government they reside in, or maybe they're just interested to meet someone new. Sometimes there's nothing magical about it. It's just a new face, might be the same pitch, the same offer, uh, the same appraisal process, but just kind of new blood, new personalities, and there's a way to make it happen all of a sudden. And it's about timing. I'm really excited. <laughs> I, just, uh, I find the whole presentation exciting. Yeah. You know, because I think we're a little bit stuck with, I know our staff reaches out a lot, but I think there's been a lot of overturn on some of the, the properties, you know, that we've identified or, you know, that maybe some new blood would help, you know, facilitate some stuff or, or get things moving. I also think I was thinking about Hewlett Packard. Like I imagine they like to tout what they did as well. So I thought, yeah. you know, like companies yeah. that have given up something, maybe not for the extreme value that they could give it, but they know that they could say, oh, and look what we did in this community that we, mm -hmm. you know, have our facility in and, and look at how the benefits go and, you know, that they're able to do the same thing in their reports and their things that that might you know, come over nicely, like they they like Absolutely. that and yeah. and saying, oh, we you know we did this with the trust for public land and this is how we did it. So I think it's an exciting opportunity. A couple I, a couple additional questions. Uh, yeah. The the breakdown between the GoCo funds, TPL funds, and the Colorado Springs Open Space funds looked like. Their open space fund did two thirds to three quarters of the purchase price, and GoCo and TPL supplemented the the balance. Is that pretty typical for for the deals, or does it vary on a case by case basis? It, yeah, it varies uh, significantly, uh, case by case. Uh, I mean, I think that very seldom do I find a project. Or does anyone in the uh, in the organization nationwide find a project where there's one funding source? So, uh, I guess what's common is there's a a variety of funding sources, but the, the matching can vary greatly depending on where you are. And then, with respect to GoCo, is is that a relationship that you guys already have already that you can kind of tap into the GoCo, you know, contacts that you have at the state? Um, yeah, yeah we've got. Um, so our our office is in Denver at 14th and Grand, and uh, GoCo's they just moved. They're at like 19th and Grand. Uh, very good relationships with those folks uh, over there. Uh, I should mention we also have a brand new uh, community trails program, uh, privately funded, that we just um, hired a director, and it's Jake Houston, who used to be at GoCo and run their um, local government and connect program. Um, so he's a great addition. And, uh, yeah, we, we do very well with GoCo. <laughs> I think we've also used GoCo in the past for, say, Allison for our has work. Yeah, gotten a lot of grants from them as well. <laughs> if I could just piggyback on Mark's comment, though, I want to stress that it's not just GoCo that's helping you guys. There are a lot of other federal agencies, organizations that you get funding from because that's of your right. relationships. Yeah, and and we're privately funded, like any charity. Um, we you know we're, we're we're very accustomed to and good at writing grants to GoCo, but we also absolutely write grants to. Uh, really we look at a deal and we kind of dissect it quickly and figure out what are the applicable funding sources. Is it parks and wildlife? Uh, is, it, is there a trail element? Um, could you go to DOLA, uh, Department of Local Affairs, what have you? Um, and then what kind of philanthropic resources are in the community? Are there foundations or individuals that maybe we already know or maybe you guys know and they get excited that there's a national conservation group involved? Uh, and, and what I mean I should I, I don't, I don't want to overpromise because all these things are um, highly variable. Uh, but uh, yeah, we would absolutely be interested to talk <coughs> further to see if there's some projects on your priority list that we could help uh, move forward. The, the U Valley example is pretty interesting. I actually 
was there last time I was in Colorado Springs, and it's a really great park. It's a fantastic place, and we, my whole family enjoyed being there. Um, you know, one of the things that I think we're struggling with is we haven't had a substantial recent open space purchase, and in the meantime, all of property prices have inflated, and so we get the historical, we've never paid that much. How is fair market value typically determined? What's your role in fair market value in, in, in the negotiation? Great question. That's a good question. So, uh, like any agency, we work through an appraisal process. And so what, um, what I found is rather than, um, you know, the landowner, you kind of, maybe you make an offer, maybe you have an appraisal, maybe the landowner has their appraisal, and you're kind of at, at uh, loggerheads on getting a deal done. Um, what I found and what we do in, in many cases is, um, you know, we talk to the jurisdiction, we see what the priorities are, we reach out to that landowner. Um, if there's interest, um, so just a little bit of interest, we say, well, what about, you know, let's, let's, look at, let's talk about fair market value. Um, <laughs> nine times out of 10, their expectations of value are up here, the market is here. Uh, but if you can get them uh, under option, if you get them interested in the deal and even signing something, even if it's a letter of intent, uh, and then you start talking about appraisers and who do you, you know, who do you know, who do you like? We have folks that we use, um, Superior may have appraisers you guys use. As a, as a government, um, and we try to find one or two that everybody can live with. And so you, you start with an appra appraiser, a person that people get agreement with, and then you're kind of bought into that process. And that, it's, it's not nine times out of 10 it works, but often that helps a lot to build some trust and you get into the appraisal process. Um, they, the landowner will see that the Trust for Public Land is you know, paying for uh, title research, that we're paying for other due diligence, that we're engaging them in the appraisal process. Uh, and yeah, the market is really hot. I mean, it's been hot for a while. It's hot in Colorado Springs, it's really hot there right now. Uh, and so sometimes you've, you you just you gotta look for the newest comps you can. Sometimes you, the appraiser is doing their usual thing and we can come in and say, you know, you, you didn't consider this, or you didn't consider that. We knew about this sale, the Mayhoffer property sold in Louisville. Did you guys mm -hmm. consider that? It was pretty unique and creative. Um, I, and you know that, that property took decades before it came to fruition. And um, I was privy to a few of the appraisals. And the developers came to our office and said, do you guys want to help? And called up Boulder County. And Janice Wisman said, we got this. We got it. Thank you. But I think we've got it. And so we just stepped back. And there was too many cooks in the kitchen. And I knew Janice and, and the Louis Van Lafayette had various appraisals. And every six months, the appraisal went up because the market went up. So a lot of that's timing, too. Um, and so it just working around that. But it's tricky. It's not easy right now uh, with landowner expectations and the market being as uh, heavy as it is. I've got a technical question. So yeah. with conservation easements, um, <clears throat> who are the different parties you have to get involved to, to get that, uh, I guess, included within a deal? Is that something that uh, a local jurisdiction such as Superior would help with, or is that something you have to go through the state with, or what? In what, terms of who would hold the conservation easement, or? Uh, basically, maybe I'm not understanding it very well either. Um, I mean, is there? It, sure. It could, so I, um, uh, I mean, I think, is it Bulljack, one of your properties mm -hmm, that, that's mm -hmm. somewhat agricultural? Uh, so let's pretend that, that um, maybe I should be more circumspect. <laughs> uh, so if there's a working farm and ranch and a landowner wants to protect it, so they, let's, let's say the they, uh, conservation easement's worth $2 million, we secure a deal to buy it for a million at half cost. Um, the landowner grants, he's the grantor, uh, a conservation easement to a land trust. We, we can be that land trust, but we don't hold conservation easements. And so at the same time we're negotiating the purchase of the easement, we're also looking for a local government or a land trust, those are the two typical quanti uh, qualified entities to hold, be the grantee of that conservation easement. Um, so statewide groups like Colorado Open Lands could be an option. If it's a big working ranch above 200 acres, it's uh, Colorado Cattlemen's Agricultural Land Trust is a good option. And in a lot of cases here in Boulder County, it's uh, the county, the city, or uh, any number of city partners that hold the conservation easement. Okay. So hey. it, and then, then you can get in the minutiae of, you know, if Superior wanted to hold an easement, are you a qualified entity? Are you certified by the state? 
if you're not certified by the state, then you can't offer the landowner a state tax credit. And so then maybe okay. you look to a land trust that is certified. And that was where I was I was wondering if there were yeah. certain challenges with that, with getting, I guess, a certification to be able to hold. It, it, it's, uh, yeah. I, I also sit on the Colorado Coalition of Land Trust Board, and um, we just went through a big policy session with the legislature, and, and it was successfully created a brand-new division of conservation. And so we think that the tax credit program is going to be, uh, which has had a lot of issues with um, uh, just being slow. Those bottlenecks, I think, will go away with this new structure. But the, um, if you aren't familiar, the conservation easement tax credit program is very uh, uh, enticing to landowners. If you donate $3 million of conservation easement value, you qualify for a $1.5 million state tax credit. Mm -hmm. A lot of people can't use that state tax credit against their uh, state income tax burden because we've got, what, like around a 5% state tax. So you can sell those in the free market. So you can sell those to like, um, you know, hmm. uh, Pete Coors or someone that has a higher tax burden that could use that. Hmm. Uh, and there's actually, there's tax credit brokers um, in Longmont uh, up and down the front range that can help landowners with that. So most of the ranchers we work with, um, they might expect to sell at about 85 cents on the dollar, that tax credit. So that's a, also another big funding source that we can help navigate uh, between landowners and uh, agencies. That's great. I, I think I have a, a more general question. So uh, it sounds like you've had a chance to look at our open space uh, summary report and recommendations and kind of what we have available in town. Um, so if we if we were interested, and it certainly sounds, at least from this committee's perspective, that we'd be interested in, in uh, working with you. Or, I mean, is there something that you take a look at that and then you go off on your own? I, you said that you're kind of, you take the lead and, and whatnot. Or what what is that? It's kind of more logistical next step. Yeah, I mean, I think it is also making sure the, tr the trustees mm -hmm. um, would be bought into our involvement mm -hmm. um, and staff, and then probably having a sit down with whoever the, the key staff and decision makers would be and kind of um, have a discussion about the priority list. And I could, you know, fairly quickly tell you what, where we thought we could add value and, you know, I'd be frank and say, hey, we don't think this one's a good fit. Maybe it's too small. Um, maybe we're not sure what other funding sources we could bring to the table, what have you. I'll speak for the board and say I want you to meet with our <laughs> decision okay. makers. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah, I'm wondering, is, is it, I don't know if we have to, we had this presentation, I know the board we were knew we were having that, I don't know if our next step is that we recommend that this presentation be presented to the board or some thing like that, or if it can yeah, just, I was the same. Or, or if we even have to do that, well, if, you, if you can give me your contact information, and then I can, I'll facilitate facilitate the introduction. And yeah. you know, to the extent that the board wants to have an actual presentation, which I think would be very valuable, mm -hmm. um, and they would they would appreciate it. But also, I don't want to unnecessarily delay things because we're not meeting again until July because our second oh, meeting right. in June is canceled. canceled. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, should we try to maybe identify the pro a project? I mean, I think we all have the same thing in mind. I'm, I'm guessing we all do, but <coughs> is that worthwhile, or should we propose it to you and you would do a little bit of work and understand that? With a, pro a property, a property. He, he knows. I mean, he knows all of our goals. Mm -hmm. I would be more interested in knowing his expertise where he thinks he can most benefit us because that may be different than what sure. we want. Yeah, and it sounds like if there were a meeting with the board, that would be kind of part of the discussion. So, I, I mean, we've given the board our, our goals and mm -hmm. what our rankings of all the properties. So, I mean, that, that information is out there. Justin's had a chance to look at it. So I think what, what from our aspect, and Mark, correct us if I'm wrong, but from what I'm seeing, it probably makes the most sense for us now we've we've facilitated this first introduction but now we'll sit back and if there is a meeting with the board maybe maybe we can have somebody or multiple people available to as well bring uh value to the conversation if needed but at this point a recommendation out of us isn't necessary or stating we'd like to go after projects a b and c because justin will be able to say this is where we think we can add value so maybe not skewing it yeah, yeah, that's what that's what I'm saying. We have it all out there, so I'm not sure there's anything. I mean, I, I think it can't hurt also to just have your minutes reflect that you're making a recommendation to the board. But I mean, uh, for all intents and purposes, I'll I'll carry on the uh, the word to the board and to the mayor and to the town manager and Allison do the same, I imagine. And um, awesome, we'll, we'll get the ball rolling. But 
can't can't hurt to have additional reminders. Okay. So how does this impact number eleven, number twelve on our agenda? Mm -hmm. I'd say let's address eleven and twelve when we get there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, 11 is tricky because it's multiple parcels, but there's one for sale right now. That's the difference. Uh, I, I just don't want to waste Justin's yeah. time talking about yeah. that, but I, I, it's certainly something we need to bring into the conversation to and bring to the board's attention if it's something we're interested in. Any other questions? I don't. I just think it's great work that you guys do. Oh, I mean, thanks. seeing the properties and the things that you guys have done it. I'm excited that Tracy got to meet you and bring you to meet with us. Yeah, I just want to say this is the most exciting day of open space. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, Mark, for facilitating and all your support. And thank you, Justin, for being here. We really appreciate it. Yeah, I, we can't say thank you enough for your willingness to come and meet with us. Oh, yeah. Thank you very, very much. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, um, so for the group to make a, I don't think the recommendation needs to be very long. Um, it could probably be quite brief. Uh, maybe something along the lines of we recommend that the Board of Trustees invite uh, the uh, Trust for Public Lands uh, to present at a board meeting. And or working session or something. Or uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know that it has to be at a board meeting. I just think, that's a good point we, you know. Maybe just present to the board. Just present, to present the board. you know, or yeah. meet or, in, you know, have a meeting or introduction or something. Yeah, yeah. present slash meet. Yeah, present slash meet. Because I could get that meeting in that would yeah. expedite things a little Yeah, I don't think it's. Okay, so we recommend, <clears throat> we recommend that the Board of Trustees invite the Trust for Public Lands to present slash meet with the board. Uh, Should we include and, uh, town staff? Yeah. And town staff. And town staff, maybe in there. To discuss <coughs> collaboration opportunities. I like that. All right, rereading back to the group. Uh, we want to make sure it's specific to open space, though, not parks, right? Because that's the other aspect that this focuses on is the parks, where we're just focused as pro staff. We're just focusing on pro staff. Mm -hmm. So let's make sure it's specific to open space. Well, I mean that's I don't that, know though. Yeah, that's true, but I don't know if we want to limit it that much. I mean, we are clearly interested in the open space, but I mean, from a town perspective, if there's other value as well. I'm, I'm just talking about our committee. I, I don't want to override this if there's discussion. I, <laughs> I'm not well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I understand Sean's concern with stepping softly around the topic of where our boundaries are. However, when it goes to the board, the board's it doesn't have want. the same boundary, right? Okay. I, I think it's it's totally appropriate for OSAC to recommend that the board meet with the Trust for Public Lands uh, to discuss, you know collaborating on you know, any opportunities for open space acquisition and just leave it at that. And then to the extent that the board wants to do something beyond that, that's its prerogative. Okay. So reading back what I've got, we recommend that the Board of Trustees invite the Trust for Pub Public Lands to present uh, slash meet with the board and town staff to discuss open space acquisition and collaboration opportunities. Any adjustments? Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay. I will make a motion to uh, recommend to the board as previously read. Is there? I second that motion. Okay. Any additional discussion? Okay. Uh, all in favor? Unanimous. All right. Beautiful. Nice. Allison, I'll send you this language tomorrow. <laughs> I was like, thank you. Thank you. All right, perfect. Thank Justin, you. thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, we thank look forward you. to really, seeing really you soon. Really appreciate it. Yep. Yeah, thanks Grab for your time tonight. Yeah, yeah, please. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thank that was awesome. Yeah, and I forgot to mention to you guys, so there's cookies and... Uh, 
dietary concerns, gluten free and vegan <laughs> cupcakes <laughs> in the back. So, Good job, Ken. Bye, please. Um, all right, moving on. Uh, a presentation on the Anderson property. Allison? While Allison's pulling it up, just one thing to stress to the group. Um, this is part of the new process that the board uh, <clears throat> agreed and implemented to. So instead of concept plans and whatnot, uh, where we would try to give any input then, um, the board gave uh, Manager Magley direction to include any uh, committees uh, that would necessitate some type of input uh, to bring it to them so they can see the applications that come forward and make comments. So this is the first one that's hitting us uh, under that new process. Um, I really appreciate it. Yeah, and, and just to, to add to that, um, you know, basically what the board decided over the past couple months, um, I, I think it was actually already in the code, but now it's just to kind of follow the code. Uh, and this is to prevent um, any you know committees from potentially stepping on anybody's toes inadvertently. But there is pr provision in the code for land use applications that when they're submitted, uh, you know they go to the planning commission, they go to the planning department, they go to the planning commission, and they go to the board. Uh, but throughout that process, if uh, the board and or the town manager uh, deems it appropriate to ask any of the advisory committees for their opinions on any of the pending applications, they have the authority to do so. So the board has said, okay, Matt, as the town manager, you have the authority to do this. So in his discretion, any applications that are coming before the town board, before they get to the board level, mm -hmm. are going to get referred to. So the board hasn't seen this. I haven't seen it. This is the first time I'm seeing it. <laughs> um, like, but you, you get first crack at it. Okay. And there's been community engagement recently around Anderson. Yeah, I know there was a something. All community and even neighbors, yeah. right over there, got a, a preview of it as well. And that that was the developer. The developer, yeah, yeah. the yeah. developer was doing itself, that, correct. You know, opening it up to the community and, and soliciting input. It yeah. wasn't anything from the town. And I'm looking for the right file. So one thing to add to all this, I think it's important to ensure that we also. I mean, this is a very good gesture. I think we need to make sure that we stay within the bounds of when we do make comments, let's make sure they fall within our purview as an open space committee. If there's other comments that fall outside, I think that's something we just need to make sure we uh, make as residents on our own time and our own statements just to make sure that we don't go outside our lane. She's just making sure she's getting the right file. Yep. Just to see. Like all of us. You name them all the same thing, and then you're like, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> what am I supposed to be on? Yeah. So other history, ProStack saw this last month at their at their uh, first or their meeting. Um, and I think what I heard is it's just the two of us that are seeing it, and then it's going to planning commission and then the board. And the developer at his, when they had that meeting last week, said that I think that's scheduled for July. Since we do have a well, no, I mean, I guess the, some interesting things about it, though, is that originally I was thinking that where Tract H ended, that that went through the Anderson property, but it doesn't. Where Tract 8 Anderson property is uh, south of where all that yeah, goes, so where Anderson Tract H would Superior. continue is more on the uh, downtown Superior okay. property. But getting trail through there and then wildlife corridor, I think, are at least the big concerns that I have with anything that they would put in there. Yeah, and it's purple. Lots of purple. Okay. Yep, perfect. Okay, thanks. Okay, fine. Sorry about that. I had to call the, my director <laughs> to make sure I had the right file. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. Sorry for that. So 
So um, this is the design and um, the legend um, kind of refers to um, the different accessibility type trails and most of these areas um, you know, depict the sidewalks and the trails that cross through the areas. Um, and this um, southern uh, most spot on this design is open space. Alice, I'm sorry, real quick. Does everybody know where this property is? Kate, are you familiar with this property? Okay. Yeah. All right, sorry, Allison. So just to the open space part, Allison, that's that neighborhood there can like that's Waldonia down the bottom, right? Mm -hmm. and then uh, no, no, no. That's this is Waldonia's not on the screen here. Uh, Amher Rock. It's Coal Creek, Creek that is the the main one that going north south right there. The one that we see towards the bottom going east west is Amherst. Is Amherst? Okay. Yeah. Thank well, you. well, Dona's one one further down. It's after those houses. Exactly. Right? At the bottom. Okay, just so I can orient myself. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> if we were looking at the very very bottom right corner, that's the traffic light to nowhere on mm -hmm. 88. Yep. <laughs> okay. Is it going to become a traffic light to somewhere? <laughs> well, well let's like let's it. let Allison finish and yeah. then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the, this blue um, line here is a future plan trail, and um, this uh, yellow dotted line here is um, a concrete trail. Um, the the um, you know border. This is the border of the parcel. And it's pretty straightforward and basic mm -hmm. um, yeah. design right now. So on the western edge, that to cul de sac there, is there going to be kind of a green space strip between where the existing road and cul de sac on the west end there, uh, and the new cul de sac there? And and a paved trail. Um, these, this is um, yeah. The kind of yeah. Oh, the other side. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Here's um, one. Yeah. So, so is this all going to be kind of open space as well, or green space, so that because along here is roughly where that traffic edge goes, right? Yeah, along that yeah, edge. roughly that's it, right? Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. That's that's the Fryco ditch. That's a Fryco ditch. Is we're looking at another 225 uh, uh, feet, yeah, roughly. Yeah. So Where we're, line is. yeah. Right now, isn't there kind of a de facto, well, that's the road, right? Yeah, that, that is the fry code dish that people are using. Right now is a trail, roughly. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of the wildlife corridor, if we're going to have a constant connection from basically track each down into this green space going down, well, yeah, that's my biggest concern. Yeah. How is that, I'd yeah. like to see a better wildlife corridor. Yeah, this is pretty narrow. The space in here is pretty narrow where you would expect a lot of, the, well, again, I, I'm, I can't think like a deer or whatever animal to get down to the reservoir down in this area. But I would think that would be the most logical, you know, either down this Frico ditch area down here and then along here where that trail goes to cross the river to the reservoir or somewhere up along this northern edge to get to where the pro future proposed trail is going to be. That's Highway 36 right there. Yeah. So I would think they want to get as far away from everything, and all cars and light and traffic and everything else and come down along. I, that would be my I fully agree with that. No, I think you're completely right. So, so I, my only concern is, is that space in there because that's really where if we're going to have a continuous um, tapestry uh, open space from Boco all the way into basically uh, the reservoir. We need to kind of make this a little more defined uh, open space strip. Right That's my two cents. I, and I fully agree with that. So, uh, I mean, just talking about the other options, these, this was kind of the only other way that uh, we were talking about. And so well, so I I attended the developers. Uh, presentation uh, last week and um, as you guys can can see they're having uh, the east side end as a cul-de-sac 
rather than coming all the way through and uh, connecting to 88th. This is going to be a fire access road if fire trucks need to get there, but that's it. Um, if they, uh, the developers stated, and of course there was comments about traffic impact to the rest of the neighborhood, and the developer's comment was that what he envisions uh, the town and uh, RC Superior developing is continuing with uh, the promenade road uh, all the way here, connecting right here, and bringing promenade all the way down, and then connecting down to 88th. So they are envisioning in the future that there would even be a road here. Um, so in all reality, the only space for a wildlife corridor is this right on the western edge. Now, I don't know if a lot of you guys are familiar with that area. That's a fairly steep incline yeah. right there between the two. Um, the developer even stated, someone asked if there's going to be any trails over there, um, that the grade is so steep that there's no way they could put anything in. I mean, if if that's the case and we're not going to try to do a, a trail all the way through here, which we're clearly not, I would even recommend that I mean, I'm assuming to purple some type of sidewalk. I would recommend that we we get rid of that completely and just have this be fully green, open, natural area. Allison, is all that space on the south side of the Anderson property open space or manicured? It's currently marshland, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's yeah. not manicured. Oh, uh -huh. The developer stated that he's going to keep it as is. Okay. The biggest change is that this is currently a dirt path. Is that where the current path is now? Yes. What, what this saying? basically okay, follows yeah. the current path. Okay. They just uh, are recommending that it be paved. Um, I think that's another discussion we should have, whether we agree or disagree with it. Um, I know that town staff and de facto our position in the past has been that we pave any of the new trails that we add. I know there's a contingent of people within town that prefer dirt for running, biking, whatever. I don't know if this is an area that that would be better for, but the, it currently is that right now. So I don't know if everyone... It's steep enough, though, with crushed fine. That's going to have to be a ton of maintenance anytime it rains. I, and the other trail connecting all the way up to Rock Creek Parkway from there is all concrete. Yeah. So it would be a really short section of dirt. I mean, I prefer dirt, but I don't know. I... It would be continuous concrete from there. So if someone was trying to get on their bike from up in there down to 88, it'd be an easy way to be on concrete the whole time. Mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, if they put a road up there, though, how would track the trail from Tract H? I mean, that's I'm not seeing how that's all going to connect through there, especially, you know, there's a road there that's going to go up through the RC Superior, you know, it, well, there isn't a good vision for how the, all that's going to work, right? Because track date basically ends where on the left where that dotted black line is. If you just extend that up, that's essentially where yeah, track date right ends. There. It's just right there. Just stops at yeah. the end of that house. Yeah. So, I mean, if we're thinking connectivity purposes, I mean, mm -hmm. I think basically a uh, and RC owns all the rest of above the I think so. line, um, right? Okay, I just want to make sure that that's yeah. not another little. It's uh, all part of the downtown Spear project. Project. That's is that where we were gonna? They were looking at skate parks at one point. Is there or park five or park something? Park five was over here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Just trying to put it all together. Actually, I take that back. I just checked. Town of Superior owns that whole stretch all the way over to thirty six. RC doesn't own this right here. Yeah. Is that part of what was granted over with the track H? I think I think there is a land swap deal that is like part of the entire project. So you know the ownership of the parcel might still be in the town's name until you know that something triggers and then it gets transferred. But okay. my understanding is that that whole part was part of the downtown superior deal. And that was what the developer said last week as well. Okay. The red rectangles, squares, what do they represent? That are outside of the. There's, there's actually one on the, the south side there. Mm -hmm. Those red 
the squares and the rectangles. Yeah. Mm, they're not in the legend. It may just be notes from different oh. um, departments or comments. So beyond a wildlife corridor, connectivity to, to Tract H, the Tract H trail is clearly important. Do we want to make, I mean, they already have uh, accessible sidewalks going this way. Is there any other recommendation worth making? I mean, I don't see another. There's no other. Yeah. There's really no other way. I mean, I think if I'm remembering correctly, I think one of the things that ProStack mentioned is why have this just be a future trail? Why not uh, actually do it now? Because if they don't do it now, well, and what's the incentive to do it down the road? Why would they come back and do it? So any other comments, questions? Do we want to start forming a recommendation? Yes, we should start forming a recommendation. What did ProStack say about that future potential road? Yep. Do it now, but what were they pushing for, a trail or a road? A side, some sort of sidewalk or trail. Not a road. But, but the developer was saying it's going to be a road. Yeah, and, and both... would put a road in yeah yeah so if rc owns all the way to, that they would want another way out of town center mm -hmm. out the back to eight yeah so pro stack didn't talk about this being a road at all their meeting was prior to this developer meeting all they were doing was talking about what they see in front of them and because the blue says a possible future trail they were saying let's just make that a current trail And what's the distance of the open space? How much is that? Like down the bottom, like that marshland? Does it say like what the acreage is or or how many how much feet that is? It's probably a seventy five feet across. Okay. Something like that. I'm looking Just from knowing where that trail is here. to the other houses. Maybe a hundred, some, something like that. So narrower than Tract H is. It's a concrete trail, one says paved, one says and paved. one says paved. The green says paved. Because they actually talked about connecting, you know where the trail crosses over 36 right there? Mm -hmm. They talked about actually finishing that down all the, on our side. Mm -hmm. Instead of crossing over, you could do both. You could just turn off there and come into Superior. Mm -hmm. I remember that from a, a town meeting. They discussed that possibility. So my guess is it would just connect there. So is our recommendation then to take that sidewalk out of what, this one right here? Yeah. The pink? The pink. It's a little offshoot. I mean, I guess my only other thought is you can take it out. Is, is it going to become an immediate social trail for everyone who goes yeah, <laughs> through there? No, that's I mean, that's true. always the other, you know, if if you're on the cul-de-sac and you say, i got to walk all the way down the street to connect to yellow, I'm just going to, you know, run down a, a thing anyways. That would be my only thought that they might come back with. Um, so but I definitely understand trying to keep the corridor open. Like, I think that's just, you know, trying to explain that of what we're trying to do. But I don't know if they can kind of swing the trail a little bit, you know, or that sidewalk closer to something, you know. I mean, so should apparently, we ask? They, apparently they put this in because they've already done the, the work to see what the grade is. And they, I'm, I'm assuming they think that the grade is shallow enough where it's okay to put in the trail here. 
Is there a way to get from this road or cul-de-sac down into this green space as well? Because that's the other question is, if there's already something existing, I can't, it looks like there's some kind of weird dotted line there's going on. There. There. Yeah, there's a fence there. Yeah, there's there's no way down. Fence, yeah. yeah. There is there is a, I won't say it's a very uh, obvious social trail that connects Frico to the existing cul-de-sac. It goes right around the corner, I know. Yeah, it, there is something there, but it's compared to other social trails, it, it's not very obvious. I don't think whether we have a trail there or not is going to make a big difference to the animals. I mean, you know, They'll we're going to have to cross this major road here anyway, but it's going to get a lot of traffic, so having a trail there is inconsequential. My concern is just the amount of space between yeah, yeah, these homes and these homes. That's that the space differs. I don't care about the trail, but the space is my issue. And you know, yeah, I agree. The developers doesn't care. I mean, you know, they have to meet their thirty-three percent criteria or whatever our town code is, and if what is existing here. Meets I'm that assuming that's that's meeting it, the yeah. leaving that yeah. marshland and. They're just trying to squeeze as much in as they can. So. Do we know? Is it is this what it's zoned for, or are they will they be needing a zoning change? For this I'm Let's, trying to look it up right now this is part of Rock Creek subdivision so it's part of the PD process I don't know if there's a I don't think a zoning change is necessary but I think they still need board approval okay they, they don't have use by right okay I guess that's what I cared about all right so what I've got so far <clears throat> is the undeveloped land on the west side of the property should, pres should be preserved as a wildlife corridor. Fencing should be added uh, around the cul-de-sac to dissuade the creation of social trails and the space should be enlarged as much as possible. It's not the most eloquent. <laughs> I understand widened. 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 Okay. Do we want to add support to ProStack's thing of do the blue trail? You know, we recommend that the blue trail be considered now versus later. Do we recommend that? Or do we, re I'm asking do that, what like, do we, thing? do we? I think it goes to connectivity through Tract H, so I'm, I'm in favor. Yeah, if there's connectivity, then I'm in favor of it as well. side coming out of that cul-de-sac going north-south down to where the the light is oh, the other buttons yeah, so, that, so right here yeah so there's another proposed where the paved just like this section comes out here so you know this blue trail would then connect in here so um, you know, coming off of 88 make that corner you could you know, come up here which is you know, already existing now in the, the dirt trail across this property or you have this which would take you up to potential connections further up yeah to the going into downtown yeah um, and like I said I, I didn't realize at first when I started thinking about this is going to be a strip of concrete with no beginning and no end not really, because it at least would have a beginning here. I mean, it may, may still end abruptly on the northern edge of the property uh, temporarily until mm -hmm. other things are done. And even though it's private property, I mean, there are social trails that are at the other end of that. I, I mean, just like we built Track A, Track H as a trail to nowhere, if we didn't build it then, who knows when it would have been built in the future. Yeah, I, I, I just don't want to lose it, lose the opportunity to build it. 
if we have it now. I agree. I think we should put it in there. All right. So the future, the trail. All right. So the future trail on the northeast part of the property should be built during the rest, during the construction of the. During the development of the. So is the blue, was it future just be for budgetary reasons they didn't want to construct it? Or I, I still don't understand why it was future. I mean, it's just how they have it labeled. My guess is that because there is a planned road there, they don't want to put it in place and then have road construction that could potentially affect it. Because if we put it, okay. All right. So I think this needs to be wordsmithed a bit, but the future trail on the northeast part of the property should be built during the construction of the project rather than in the future. It looks like that this um, is also labeled future promenade drive so so is that maybe the road are you saying yeah because promenade drive would be the road and then it would be constructed probably at the same time as that future road but the but the thing is i mean that that road is by no means guaranteed i mean that's something that has to still go through town approval be brought to the to the board I mean, yes, it totally makes sense, but... Is the recommendation that we want to make that we want to say um, construct the trail, or is it even just to allocate funds towards the construction of the trail? Like, do you know what I mean? Like how we worked with the developer, you know... Calamante? Not Calamante. Well, Calamante is one, the other one over here. Like oh, some of it... Crossing. Yeah, some of it is like just you know the ask might be well it might not be constructed right now but we'd like you to put <laughs> x amount of funds towards it when it is how does that work to work though did, did they transfer funds to the town i don't know the they just committed to building it like they committed to building it when it was time to build so i don't that's what i'm asking like is that what we're trying to say like do we do we say that we want it built or really is that we don't want to the reason I'm assuming the reason we are saying build it is you don't you want to have them somewhat fund some of it right uh, I mean yeah I mean that's I, we that, all, we'd rather have them spend their money and as part the of the yeah as part of the amenity for their neighborhood and and being part of the you know fabric of the town Do we want to get into, I mean, I'm, I'm having a hard time figuring out how to write that. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I know. I, I mean, just I'm just saying that's where the discussion is going. Like, so either yeah. we say build it or, you know, that's fine. But I think that's the, the thought process behind why we want it built now. I mean, we could even just be more generic and just say, you know, consideration that this trail will be part of the project or something like that. Because yeah. i got to imagine the board is going to be pretty picky about that also. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much detail we need to get in there. I'm just a thought. Yeah. I think we can add fine. Mm -hmm. Alright, so how do you want to change it? So just be considered as part of the current project so that we for Yeah. I don't know if that's too vague, though. I was going to say, I'm not sure they would understand exactly what we're going for. Um, so what I have right now, the future trail on the northeast part of the property should be included during the construction of the project rather than in the future. Um, 
we're afraid that's too specific? Is that where we're going to arrive? I mean, it's a recommendation. They can shoot it down for a, because of the road issue or whatever that we don't have that information. So yeah, I'd say I think it's good enough. Okay. Unless you want to say something to facilitate connectivity to downtown or That's traffic age say, or something. Yes, yes, I would add that in for sure. You just need a reason, a good reason. That's a great reason. Okay. To facilitate connectivity to downtown Superior and tract age. Yeah. All right. Do we want? Do we have any other aspects that we want to include in this recommendation? Don't, but there were some concerns about the trail and uh, the south trail. Does anyone? You mean in terms of concrete versus yeah, dirt? Does anyone want to bring that up while we're on it? I don't know. It's currently dirt. I don't know how much erosion's on there now. So uh, very little. Okay. Yeah. It's been like that for yeah. years. So I'm happy and I'm I'm fine with keeping it unpaved. Yeah. The well, it looks like it'll be paved though. It looks like it's either paved or concrete. Yeah. That, so that's I'm reading right. it right. Yeah. If if we are, I'd be willing to keep it dirt if they're willing to widen the uh, <laughs> yeah. the western edge, save them some money on one end and take a cost hit on the other. I'm probably the one who continues to harp on this, but I really like some options for you know, dirt crusher gravel trails through town. I rode that trail this morning. And went out of my way to ride it. Um, on our way over to Coal Creek, and so because uh, because of gravel, and, and um, you know we hop on 88th, and then we go up to Coal Creek for more gravel. So I like it that way. It doesn't bother me that I you know ride on pavement and hop off and onto dirt. Um, I would assume that um, you know there's there's more to the issue. Maybe it's ADA compliance. Maybe it's maintenance. But well, ADA compliance is going to be tough on that yellow part on the west side. That is steep there. It is. It says That's not, not accessible there. Concrete trail not accessible. Oh, there. okay. The purple Perfect. Is, yep. Wait, the green is paved trail accessible. Yeah. Okay. So I would assume that indicates yeah, the that ADA. that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. That's so a good point. recommend that we keep it crusher fine. At all possible. If at all possible, but I'm only in those instances where there would be a steep grade or erosion, immense erosion with high maintenance. Uh, it would pay it. Okay. Uh, so because if, if they don't want to go on the gravel, they have the option to go on the road right there, which you know, if they're going. The reservoir or something, they just take the road over so it's like going. So the way I have it written right now is consider leaving the trail on the south side of the property unpaved. I didn't say crusher fine because it's not that's actually crusher fine right now. No, that's it's just dirt. Now. Yeah. You want to decide why? Um, to provide a diversity of. Trail surfaces. Diversity of surfaces services throughout town all right any other aspects of this property I think we've hit the big ones that I had yeah, I I'm good okay so reading back what I have written down <clears throat> we recommend that the Board of Trustees consider the following points related to the Anderson property the undeveloped land on the west side of the property should be preserved as a wildlife corridor. Fencing should be added at the cul-de-sac to dissuade the creation of social trails. The space should be widened as much as possible to encourage wildlife activity. Number two, the future trail on the northeast part of the property should be included during the construction of the project rather than in the future to facilitate should I say immediate connectivity? Or I guess there isn't connectivity there anyway. Well, so to facilitate connectivity to downtown Superior and Tract H. 
And then number three, consider leaving the trail on the south side of the property unpaved to provide a diversity of trail surfaces throughout town. Any final edits? No, that sounds great. I think that works. Okay. I make a motion to uh, make a recommendation to the board as previously read. I second. Seconded. Any further discussion? None. All in favor? Unanimous. Right. I'll send us on this to you as well. All right, five year trail plan. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, as Allison's pulling this up, uh, what we can do tonight, we're going to see purely by the numbers how things fell out. Uh, that's the quantitative side of this, but we can add a qualitative side as well, uh, where if this doesn't look right to us or we won't think it makes sense to. Uh, uh, switch the order of some of this and that's fine um sean sent an email i don't, I don't remember if you sent that to everybody just a few of us um we could certainly weight these differently based off the other factors that we included uh during our our voting process um but real quick i'll try it if you want yeah that'd be awesome and zoom in a little bit Map or which, which uh, let's get onto the uh, spreadsheet so we can people can, can everybody read that? Should we go a little bit further? It's a little bigger. Working on it. <laughs> it's a little. Whoa. That's a little. So bit and and again, <laughs> so so Kate, background on this. Every year uh, we update uh, this document that's called the five year trails plan. It really the point of it is just put out what the priorities are for any trail construction that happens. We work with uh, the other committee, ProStac, um, on this. So we'll do a, uh, a ranking. ProStack will do a ranking. We're at the point now where we're com going to combine it. So at this stage, again, if we think any of this should be altered in any way, we'll identify that. ProStack will look at it. If they want to change any of this in any way, they will make that statement as well. And then during the leadership meeting that Ryan and I will have with the pro stack leadership, we'll basically walk walk through the changes that each group wants to make and hopefully come to some type of a, an agreement on a final order. With that said, does anybody want to start? I think there's an sure. obvious oh, one. Chan, Chan, one. <laughs> Um, the interesting thing here is I went back and looked for the last few years, 2006 and 2007, the overall ranking on Shan Shan was four. We had it uh, last year two, and ProStech had it nine. So this is not inconsistent with how the rankings have been done previously. So that's just a data point in our discussion. I mean, it did drop down ProStech quite a bit, uh, even this year. So let's just talk about what is it going to get done this year. We already know pretty much that the trail around uh, town center, all the work that's being done uh, for the Coal Creek Trail that goes over to Shan Shan now, that's all going to be done as far as I know, right, well, Allison? And, and the with, trail the, all with the road the way up. work that's being done, there's yep. going to be a sidewalk all the way up to yep. Key Bank, I think. Mm -hmm. So we already know that stuff's going to get done. Um, so. I, I don't know how much time we need to put into this, particularly when we know a lot of this stuff is already going to get done this yep. year, to be honest. It's kind of nitpicking. Um, the more I thought, I was like, ah, you know what? It, but yeah, the trailhead, I think, is, is the big one. You know, it, we, can, we can say whatever we want to, but I think the ones that we know are going to get done this year, we can just kind of table at this point and not worry about it, because regardless of whatever you rank them, they're getting done. Um, and the trailhead, we already know it's going to get done too. I mean, we're we're the ones owning that, so and we'll yeah, have an update on that later. I'm not sure. I mean, it's budget for next year. You know, things could change. They could the board could look at this and say, eh, it's number seven now, so maybe we want to put our dollars somewhere else." Well, That's my concern. Right, it could be, but we in the past have recommended our top 
what, six, eight, I don't even know, to do in a year. Um, so we can just say we like to take the top seven, I, however, however it all falls out as our priorities for 2017, 2018. I, st I think still making some type of statement that we believe Shan Shan should be reflected higher in the rankings makes it would be beneficial. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, just based on the deltas between OSAC and ProStax ranks, I mean, you got the connection to Davidson Mesa under pass. There's a there's a big difference between what OSAC and ProStack had there. The trail on the west side of Calmonte along McCaslin connects to Colton Road, whatever that is. We valued that much less than, than ProStack did. Well, um, well we rated the, that less because it's a developer funded It's a developer trend. thing, exactly. right. It, and, like, and, so that's why It's going to get done, right? So that's, so that's I don't know what, any, regardless. Agreed. Um, Shan Shan, I think that should be higher, and I think that's where we should probably go back and take into the account instead of just saying we have this many that we ranked in the top three and just kind of collecting the total counts. Maybe we should go back and, and average the actual numbers that we put in for those rankings, which would actually raise that from a seven to a six, which isn't much, but it is a six at that point. I think um, the biggest thing if, when I look at this is we rank trail a Shan Shan high and they rank maintenance on Coyote Ridge exactly high. Too. And they both ended up at seven and eight because of they they want to maintain Coyote Ridge and we said well people have said no to that. Is Coyote Ridge actually owned by Superior? Yes, that's yes, Coyote. That, that that's is, open space yeah. and yep. that's a single track trail and some other things. But I mean, when I look at that, I think our numbers seven and eight like that's that sort of everything else is kind of in there pretty close in the top five or six between us, you know. If you look down the side, there are three or four differences, but these are eight and nine differences. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and and it's you know so yeah. to them, to them they would like to spend the money on Coyote Ridge, we want to spend the money on Shan Shan. So. And, and where's the real value going to be? Because town center is where everything's happening. To be honest, and mm -hmm. and it's unfortunate that that's not recognized by the other group because that's where everything's being developed right now well, and, and I well honest... but i would i would say as someone who lives south of colton that coyote ridge is a big yeah. amenity to the mm -hmm. people who to the neighborhoods that live True. south of colton i so, agree but i think we have to listen to the neighbors you know and if they don't want to develop and we already went through all of that what yeah, well, I don't know if it's saying, uh, they're that. saying maintenance and improve. I yeah. don't know what that, you know. So, yeah, so I think those are the two sort of um, discrepancies between our two mm -hmm. groups. Is it it comes down to there. So, to I, yeah, I mean, maybe those both bump up. And, I mean, I, I'm, would this group be willing to do that? I mean, if would we have heartburn if Shan Shan moved up and Coyote Ridge moved up as a compromise? I'd first like to hear input from more people in the community on both of those. I mean, the you know, feedback we got at the uh, off-leash dog event night two or three years ago, whatever that was, was overwhelming. Don't do anything to mm -hmm. it. Maybe that's changed. I don't know. Maybe um, people want some improvement. Maybe they want it mowed down or you know the water bar is fixed. I, I don't know. I, I haven't got that sentiment. But, um, you know, Kind of one thing, I mean, I, I don't think I would you know, necessarily agree that ProStack doesn't think that Town Center is where it's happening. I mean, they rank that one, the Connections one, mm -hmm. which to me kind of plays in with the Shan Shan. Well, that's the thing, right? I mean, you want to group everything together. Yeah. yeah. I, I do think we're kind of at a case where both groups kind of know what the other groups uh, Priorities are, is. And, and we kind of voted along party lines here, and we've kind of muddled it up, honestly. It, yeah. Party lines, Coyote Ridge versus Shane. <laughs> we have party lines, but that's when when I look at this, that's that's yeah. the major discrepancy. So I'm fine with both of them moving. I, I mean, they can move up, or I or I'm also fine with saying, you know, we just want to say we want to recommend the top eight. <laughs> Or, or or make the yeah, argument I mean, to move yeah. out the the developer funded one and say, you know, we kind of put this aside just because it's developer funded, but we want you to keep on the developer to get it, you know, built this year. But 
and then and then everything else is the top seven then. It well, the other, a little the other interesting thing with ProStack is they added some other a trail connection from Calmounty to McCaslin, which we, they don't, don't, we need to find out from them what that is because it's not on the map. It's not on the map, we and it's another it. thing of Calmonte and McCaslin, which we don't know how that's any different from this. Okay. I mean, there is some discussion. I mean, and, and that almost... But that's, you know, they didn't rank it very high. I mean, it was a... Well, that... Yeah, and then th that also relates to Trail 1. I mean, it kind of where that all connects on the east mm -hmm. side of mm -hmm. McCaslin. It's kind of all intertwined there. <laughs> Bless you. Oh, excuse me. Goes in tight again. I mean, so I guess what we're hearing is that we do want to have a discussion with them and figure out where the compromises can be had. Yeah. Or we just recommend. Well, and in the past, we haven't recommended a number. Get, a number of these get built. We've just said this is the rankings. The only the only year that we actually said let's build things is when we took on that. Uh, we called it the expedited trail plan, yeah. and said let's build these I think it was six or seven trails because they're basically the corridor of McCaslin so we could finish off that connectivity so mm -hmm. basically I, the way I, I think we would see this going forward is we either one adjust the rankings and and do some bartering with pro stack to move Shan Shan higher and maybe that brings Coyote Ridge higher or we end up kind of leaving it as is and then when we've approved this and adopt it we can make a statement with our recommendation that we believe Shan Shan uh, is actually should be much higher and should be valued higher, something like that. I mean, we can pull it to the board's attention. I mean, last year, ProStack made a, a statement outside of the ranking as well. So that's there's precedent for making that type of... Why don't we just pull out the ones we already know are going to get done and then say we already know that these are going to get yeah, done we, we and talked about that though when we ranked them we said we weren't going to pull them out yeah we made a decision on that yeah and pro stack pro stack voted on it also i i think that's something and again we had discussed with pro stack making that happen last year and then pro stack put out the same list um so that didn't happen that's something that when we have our leadership meeting, we'll say mm -hmm. we need to remove these from the. Well, that's what I'm saying. Oh, highlight them now. Talking about like this one. Oh yeah. Make them red now, so that we can say these are the ones that are getting done this year. Well, we that regardless that of the ranking, they're yeah. getting done. Yeah. Well, we'll I, I yeah. mean, this one's going to get done, right? That's approved for the in the paving project. Yep. It won't be a soft surface trail, but it'll. It's been approved. You know, this is in progress. You know, this one's really difficult because it def depends on what happens on the Rogers property. I don't think this happens without knowing what the plans. That's what I was looking at. I had to go look at the map to see which one that one was. Mm -hmm. That's from basically the building here over <clears throat> to the Shan Shan trailhead. Yeah. So that one. That's just the sidewalk, though. Well, it was like thinking of putting a bridge over the creek, the creek here so you'd have to loop around on McCaslin and shooting over to where the Shan Shan trailhead is. All Boulder, they, Boulder's always like that one. Uh, I mean, I, I think we, you can talk to leadership and try to get them out and say, look, these are already mm -hmm. marked. I think that, you know, it's still going to come down that we have our priority is Shan Shan mm -hmm. and their priority, a much higher priority for them is Coyote Ridge. And, um, I don't think we're going to get ours moved up unless we the, compromise mm -hmm. and move theirs up. I mean, like, I think that that's kind mm -hmm. of just where we're at. And I think it's okay to make a statement when we do it and say, you know, you know, as our combined rankings and just say, we understand it. They have this priority. We have that priority. We'd like the town to consider them both priorities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, do know. they have any further information from the community that Coyote Ridge is really desired that we don't have? No. Okay. Then I would feel that that would not be appropriate to move Coyote Ridge up and just leave it as it is and say Shan Shan is our priority in open space. That's my two cents. So my proposal right now, we're not making any recommendations on this tonight because we have to hear what Pro Stack says. So I, I think Ryan and I have heard everybody's comments and feedback. How about we just table this till Pro Stack has had their chance to talk. I think the goal, the optimal timeline is Pro Stack meets next week. They'll go over this in their meeting. Ryan and I can meet with ProStack leadership between after their meeting and before yeah. our next meeting so that we can hopefully finalize this 
and make a recommendation during our next meeting. And then could you also take the averages instead of just counting the, uh, oh, what was it? I agree with Sean, though. We should define how we, uh, and, and how I was gonna we do this. Yeah, the, the only reason I did it this way is because that was the methodology that we had agreed with, uh, agreed to with ProStack in the past. Mm -hmm. So we can, we'll talk to them about the methodology that we use. <laughs> And it's one of they, those. They I keep breaking the rules and we keep following them. Well, right? So I, I, I try to tread lightly. I mean, it's one of those things what, that. Question, we why do you say that? What rules are they breaking? I, I'm just, well, I you know, I'm we ask them to take stuff off and they don't, and then they put stuff on and then they don't tell us about it. Well, so that okay. that's There's fair enough. <laughs> I think but that we just need to take a bigger role in making sure that it comes off. Yeah, there was there was we'll poor communication. Nice to go in year. to the spreadsheet prior to that, having leadership meeting beforehand putting it all together, putting it out to the two groups, having leadership meeting afterward, coming up with a solution. Yeah. We'll, we'll work through that. Yeah, yeah that, that would have been valuable. <laughs> well, I think at this next leadership meeting, we can get the map, we'll get the map Sorry, done no. and the list done for <laughs> next time, for next yeah, year. I don't know, we, we may not need two meetings, I think we can get that done. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I think we have a path forward here. Great. All right. Hodgson Harris Reservoir Ecological Assessment. Again, this is one I'd like to get us get checked off and, and off our discussion plate mm -hmm. now. I, where we left it last time is we did not have enough people present for quorum, so we couldn't make any recommendations. We basically, in any way, please correct me if I'm misstating anything, we Baseball. landed on, we weren't sure whether it made fiscal sense to try to get a private consultant to come in and make a statement that we want there to be X number of feet between the development and the water or, or whatever landmarks we want to use for that. That that was the path we were going down. Did we want to make a recommendation or did we want to... I mean, well, so what I remember is that we were, gonna, we were trying to decide if we could get a quote to see yes. what that would even cost yes. before we did anything else. And I don't know if we move forward on that, if we could reach out to people without involving the board. I don't know if that's something we can do or can't do. I thought that um, what ended up um, being the discussion last time was that the amount wasn't the concern, that it was more either making the recommendation or not. Okay. Um, I may have misunderstood that, though. No, I, I, we had that discussion as well. Um, I, think, I think where we landed on it was if we think it's important, we shouldn't be considering the cost. We should throw it up to the board and let the board decide whether there's enough value to spend the money. Do we think we have enough in the assessment that we received from Boulder County or do we need something more detailed that we need a private consultant to give to us? That's what it really comes down to. I mean. Well, in what we currently have, we do not have recommendations. We have information, mm -hmm. but no guidance as to what could be used for development of that land. So it's great to have information, but we are not ecologists, so. I think it would be valuable um, you know, for purposes of you know, making recommendations and giving guidance to the board if, number one, the board is re-educated about what Boulder County provided for us, what was in that uh, analysis, and then two, what's lacking in that assessment and why then it would make sense to hire you know an independent third party to do something as a supplement to what has already been done mm -hmm. I think if you have those two pieces of the puzzle then the board can determine whether or not it makes sense to allocate any resources but I think un until we understand you know what was in the initial report and what's lacking and why it's warranted to spend some money on something else you're probably not, not going to get any support mm -hmm. unless the case is made for why it's important. I think we can make that case. I'm, I, I'm feverishly going through our, our notes trying to find which month it was when we recommend rec 
recommended that we uh, get this uh, ecological assessment. The recommendation that we made uh, was not, here we go, uh, was not addressed. So <clears throat> what we stated, OSAC recommends that the town board work with Boulder County to obtain an ecological assessment of the Hotch and Harris Reservoir area. This ecological assessment should include a conservation plan with recommendations for the continued and sustainable rehabilitation of the ecosystem, should identify significant risks to the sustainability of the ecosystem, and should identify areas of the property with significant wildlife activity. If appropriate, this assessment should utilize open source historical data and documented ecological activity in the area for comparison purposes. Uh, this recommendation is consistent with the work plan. So I, I think they touched on it, but they never got as detailed as what, when I read, when, I, when we made that, what I was looking for. Um, I mean... I mean, another thought here is that maybe we don't recommend that it gets done now. Maybe we recommend that it be contingent upon them approving the development plan. That would, our recommendation would be that that would be a part of approving the plan, something along those lines. I think that's too late because if, if, if the development gets approved, they've already got where they're building and everything. So if they then do this ecological assessment that comes back yeah. and says yeah, you need okay. to move back 200 more feet, they already have the right to do so. I think it would, it would make sense, you know, if, you know, and this doesn't necessarily need to be done, you know, through, you know, a formal recommendation here, um, it, although it can be. Um, you could also do it in kind of the, the board report section that you tried and, uh, you know, now you've got like the, presentation portion of the agenda to the extent that you want to have have one you could just say all right on such and such a date we made a recommendation to the board that we contact boulder county for the you know, purposes of using their wildlife biologists to do the ecological assessment they did and 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 what we were looking for was the following things and they boulder county performed the ecological uh, ecological assessment and it contained the following conclusions um, after review this is what we think is, is lacking and warrants additional exploration. Um, and you know, then I think you, given enough history for the board to kind of understand what information was asked for, what information we think is valuable, what information we've gained, and what information we're lacking. I love that path mm -hmm. forward. That allows for some dialogue. I, I, I would love to do that. Allison, can we make a a request to, to get on the board's agenda. Absolutely. That's perfect. Yeah, I mean the summary in here, it says it should be noted, however, the additional development directly adjacent to the reservoir will decrease surface permeability and increase mm -hmm. storm water runoff into the reservoir. This will further impact water quality. So they talk about proximity, but I think what we're after is more specifics. We need a what, minimum boundary of X. Well, a minimum boundary of, and maybe the wastewater design of the, the property needs to be done in a specific way to minimize that. Mm -hmm. And when you do it, make sure that the Boulder County study gets included in the board packet yeah. and the agenda so the public has access to it. I know it's already been distributed, but it's always redundancy is always good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Any other comments on this? Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> moving on. National Trails Day debrief. Before we do the debrief, do you guys want to do the drawing real quick? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I wondered what that was. <laughs> yep. Why do we have trash in it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, clean up day. How many people trash it? Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> two? I, let's do two and then a, uh, alternate. an alternate in case we can't get a hold of the winner. So, right, this so is for the backpack? Backpack? Daypack? All right. Backpack it is. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Burbanak? 
Congratulations, Mike. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And then this is the trekking poles. Mm -hmm. okay. I just have. I think it says PJ. We have a phone number, and he's a superior resident. All right, congrats, PJ. Yeah. 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 All right, yeah. <laughs> cool. But All we right. have a number, and then you want me to do an alternate? Let's do an alternate just in case Allison can't get a hold of either of those. Yeah. Simon. All right, good luck, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> Simon Bo Bokram? Is that what you would say? Lockroom. Lockroom. Is oh, that an L okay. or a V? The lockrooms were there. The lockrooms. So that makes so, sense. So, okay, so he's the alternate. If we can't get a hold of the other two. All right. Very good. Thank you. All right, with that, debrief people's uh, thoughts, opinions what went well that we need to make sure we continue, what went poorly that we should fix or not continue next year. Um, the dog signs, awesome. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so people, that kept dogs out of the, the track, um, or out of the tent, sorry. Um, people really enjoyed the hay ride, or yeah. I don't want to say hay ride, uh, wagon ride, and the um, they enjoy the snakes and the, uh, I thought the owls were incredible. So cool. Yeah. <laughs> they were so cool. And the presentations were great. Mm -hmm. I think all the presenters were great. Yes, yeah, Sean, I don't know if you really got that feedback, but kudos to you and Allison for really pushing the horse carriage through. My, you know, the turnaround wasn't a problem. They could turn around so, and yeah. such a sharp radius. They could that turn was on a way dime. It was impressive. And yeah. I don't know. My kids went three or four times, and they just loved it. They just kept going round and round because they had so much fun. So that was, that was awesome. I think my daughter may still be on that wagon. <laughs> 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 Whose daughter? Did you see on Facebook? Cause was it your daughter who oh, got no. pooped on? Lexi, oh, Lexi yeah. Fair. So did you see on Facebook that yeah. he was offering a T-shirt so yeah. that I yep. get all, okay. I got a picture awesome. of that. I, yeah. I got a good one of that. The snake was very comfortable with yeah. her. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> um, the mowing, which I know like yeah. the weather dictates, but um, the parking on the alternate side, if we can't get it mowed, or I don't know if we have to, if like cones have to go up, no, people I, did not. I think we just bring a couple of our cars and show them where to park. Or and that, pull like way we, up and just set the example help, of where to some park. Some examples of where to park. I was yeah. thinking, do we need like spray paint to be like park here yeah, we'll just, <laughs> in a row? We'll just pull some cars <laughs> way up. Yeah, so I, I think, uh, yeah, but I just, agree. That was one of the notes I had. Yeah, um, we forgot hand sanitizer, so uh, we didn't have that for you know all the multiple of things you were picking up off the ground, whatever. Um, and then I just thought it was a great it was a great day. The weather couldn't have been any oh, better with some great. nice overcast, mm -hmm. <laughs> so that you're not sweltering so badly. But I think people enjoy it. Um, maybe some parking signs too. Like I, we had them one year, two years ago. I think he gave us a bunch of parking signs to help us mm -hmm. direct people. people. I directed a lot of people to the alternate parking lot. Um, so yeah, we used to have event parking last year. We did have event parking. But signs, signs, yeah. So no, awesome. I know that our our normal guy wasn't course. on, so that might have been. I know that your normal guy that you work with was on PTO, so that that might be part of it. The other thing we might want to think about is either someone getting up really early and marking some uh, no parking spots. There was a lot more people on the trail this year when we got there at eight. Mm -hmm. Like there was a lot more like of the front spots than we've had in previous years. We've usually all gotten all four of those, and when we came in, it was like I got the last one in the front <laughs> row. So um, I just don't know if you'd want to try to do something beforehand to be like, don't park here, if, like if someone runs by at 6 a.m. or well, something. Well, if we're going to be showing people where to park on the other side, we don't have to worry about it, right? Because we're all parking on the other side to show where. Or to that, park. yeah, or that. But it should. It's nice to have those front because I mean. I kept mine and then oh, yeah, moved it when camera, <laughs> well, with the water, but also a spot for Cameron so yeah. we could have right. a spot to come in. I mean, it's yeah. nice for the vendors to be able to um, unload their wares or, you know, 
uh, birds. <laughs> bir well, the birds, yeah. And we had also blocked off <coughs> our trailer parking that usually fits another mm -hmm. right. big group of and then cars, we didn't use but it. then we didn't need it yeah. because the wagon could turn so well. But I mean, that was just a learning learning mm -hmm. thing. Yes, yeah, so new item. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one thing I'll say, uh, the people who were on the bike ride seemed to have a good time. The route's kind of challenging from there because it's kind of straight up the hill. Mm -hmm. I, I honestly think that maybe, and, and I, I didn't do it this year, but I think in hindsight we probably should have, is actually maybe start at the Purple Park and come the opposite direction and end up over oh, there. Oh, there's a smart. Uh, because it's good, not nearly yeah. as hard to get over the hill going this way as it is coming the other way. Um, you know, the, the older kids had no problem, but one mom literally ran with her, you know, pushing oh. one kid up. Uh, now she's super fit, so I didn't feel too sorry for her. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we, we had a, a, one meltdown with sibling rivalry, um, but you know, everybody got to the top and was happy. Uh, but I, I think we might want to think about going a different route, being a one way instead of an out and back. From Colton Trailhead, you really don't have any great options to not go up. You either go up yeah. the dirt road to get steeper and steeper, or you go up over the mesa. So, I think maybe next year we would meet at the Purple Park, you know, come across together, and then climb up. By either there or Key Bank. You wouldn't even or have to go year. up there. You could just stay back behind the houses and come back down that other trail. You wouldn't have to do any climb out of Purple Park, or you do two. You do a. You could do an easy and a hard ride out. Yeah. There's a lot of options. Yeah, yeah. great idea. So. I thought it was a well-oiled machine this year. I thought it was awesome. Mm -hmm. So good job, everyone. And Allison and Sean, that I was skeptical. That was fabulous. Yeah. It went really well. So thanks for all your work on that. The turnout was, I thought, the only bummer. I don't know yeah. what that was about. The weather many, was amazing. How so many people did you estimate? 200 tops. Tops? Yeah. 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 It was weird. We ended so up I don't know if that's just because people think it's the same yeah. I love to yeah, say, you, you know, my, my boys were like, oh, we don't need to go to Hot Quest. And then I was like, it's all owls. And they were like, we're on our way. <laughs> like, and they, you know, which I know you put in the thing, but people see the big, like. Yeah, and Allison did a great job, you know, advertising and promoting. So I don't know what yeah. the problem was. I don't know if it's, they feel like I've seen that before. I've seen the snakes. I've That's my that. So it might be that you next year you so need some, something. Some new stuff. But we did. We had horses. And a bike ride. Yeah, and a bike ride. Yeah. Bike ride. Yeah. It's just I mean, I don't, I don't know. Uh, we had five kids, three parents. I mean, having said that, it was my first time. I thought that all the seats were taken. There was standing room only in the tent. So, you know, I don't know if the goal is always to make it more, but I thought, I thought it was well attended from that perspective. It was comfortable this year. Yeah. yeah. The prior years, it's not comfortable for the people to get there last because they have to stand and are always... Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so maybe next year we try to explore other, other presentations. Yeah. Yeah. Had a prairie dog. Adopt a prairie dog. Adopt a prairie dog. Take it home. We'll have a drawing. Your Everybody parents will love you. Just put it back here. I'll I mean, the Boulder <laughs> County... <laughs> display was awesome with the coyote and the so snake, snake yeah. and they had a yeah. good little game for the kids on yep. around Dodge Boop, <laughs> it was which awesome was, <laughs> was awesome and they were great to talk to yeah um yeah everything went well the boy the cub scouts were out and there was a lot mm -hmm. of cub scouts that actually came mm -hmm. so they were there and the uh, youth committee came mm -hmm. and they and they were you know there was some. There was one point. I think it was Ashley. And the wife was like, "You need to get in the car. She wants to leave." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At the very end. Right? Yeah, yeah, like, like you awesome. know, people who hung out, you know, and got a lot of information. So yeah, I don't know if, if numbers are always the goal. Like I think people really enjoyed the event, and you know, it's just always how do you tweak it. But to your point, it was a well-oiled machine. Yeah. Like. It was you know, we, we're getting those tents up. And I, oh, and just let the tent company know, I like the newer ones. The, those were much easier yeah. to put up. Yeah. There, you guys got a couple of... Watch, you had to roll. Yes, there we were. Rolled yeah. those. We had to roll those, but, but they had... Um, there was, I think, three new tents, which just have the nice right slide-up things, which were much better. And then we had two that we were jabbing keys in. And 
So if the budget allows this year, or, <laughs> or however, you know, whoever supplies those, be like, yeah, we're really looking. Can't you replace the last two? Because <laughs> that makes it much easier. The um, other thing that comes to mind is that tent was supposed to be further back. They used the wrong plan. But do we think that, I mean, do we still want to try it further back next time? Or do we want to just keep it? I mean, we didn't have the problems with the dogs. I mean, that was the main reason why we pushed it back, right? Yes. Well, and, and the seating was arranged in a different manner to block the trail oh. from the, Yeah. You know, instead of having we a do, short we way, talked a long a, we, way. We talked about that being the person, and she was like, well, we don't like people to come up behind. And then I was like, well, then we should put you on this and put the seating kind of th this really way. Well. And then I think doing it that way and having them that way and then we were able to control being like please don't go up the back like when I was telling people to go to the tent and I was like go in front of the van and go up that way do not go we only at one point where I know they that they said to want like because the kids try to creep closer yeah. and closer <laughs> you know like they just try to and they're like you have to stay back but I think that worked and I think the no dogs yeah um sign in the tent worked people got that like oh, I got to keep the dogs back mm-hmm yeah, I don't know if we need to move it. It was it worked out well. Yeah, so I think putting the the seating differently and having them in the back works. So, but I thought it was a great event. Yeah, I think we got everything I could think of. All right. Moving on, uh, the cleanup event. Um, we had. And I'm sorry, I'm blanking. I can't remember if we discussed this via email or it was in our meeting last month. We had discussed combining our cleanup event with... Mm -hmm. oh, it was in the meeting. Okay. Um, I don't remember what that date was. September 22nd. Second. September 22nd. For and National Day of Service, and there was one other... At least that's what I have in my notes. We'll have to yep. verify that. I've been known to be wrong. No, it was the 22nd, and it's the National Day of Service, and... So I think and that's one, a good um, to One end. interesting thought there is that Chili Fest is, what, like the 7th or 8th, somewhere in there? Mm -hmm. And so we could be promoting this. We could even uh -huh. be handing out handing supplies, out supplies at Chili Fest yeah. and signing people up then. We'd probably get way more traction that way than through mm -hmm. other means. So, And it's, it'll be fresh for people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like that idea a lot better. I mean, last year we kind of hand-delivered. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know about the rest of you, but you know, I went up with you know, trash bags at people's doors. They were hesitant to, hand, to you know, open it up. Like oh, this guy standing on my <laughs> yeah. trash bag. <laughs> Once they knew who you were, they were really yeah. appreciative. But yeah, that yeah. first the door opening was awkward. Yeah. I uh, after I split up uh, to you guys uh, which houses to go to. I accidentally reorganized the spreadsheet and messed up the ones I was supposed to go to. So I went to a couple of the same ones you guys did, and they're like, man, you guys really want us to clean up, don't you? <laughs> like, man, I'm sorry, I blew that one. <laughs> um, so the only thing I was thinking of uh, that might be a challenge, ProStack is doing something for National Day of Service as well, aren't they? Are they is this? Coyote Ridge. Yeah, I know they're going to do something with Coyote Ridge. Is that the event that they're going to do Coyote Ridge for? I think you know what I think having a town like service day and be like you can go do trails or you can go pick up trash or, and list. you can you know whatever works for you and your family do that and I think having it on one weekend gives it a lot of promotion like because I think it's worse to say oh now we're going to do an event on the 29th yeah. you know <laughs> like seven days later I think just put it all out there you know all the events that you know uh We've done bike cleanup, which wasn't with ProStack, which I think was just with the volunteer coordinator. Like, I think just put it all out there and get everybody out doing something. Um, but, and the town will just be better for it. <laughs> so with that said, multiple things going on with multiple groups. I assume, Allison, you guys as staff will take the lead on, I guess, organizing from a holistic point of view and advertising. But each of us will take ownership over the small little areas we're doing so we'll stay still take ownership um so do we want to do so last year we put out a sign up online um do we want to do that again or, or i'm trying to figure out the exact logistics so we can make sure we have 
I, we have a few months still, so we can think about it. But definitely promoting through Chili Fest is a great yeah, idea. I like the idea of advertising before and then, you know, so maybe have them sign up at Chili yeah, Fest and we hand them their supplies there and then we can kind of follow up with them. And, um, you know, I, th I think if we can do that, it kind of eases the burden of getting the supplies out and it probably increases our numbers. I mean, yeah. I think there's a lot more people that are going to come by Chili Fest to talk to us about stuff versus you know we'll respond to an email from a list or something mm -hmm. agreed i personally i'm not necessarily against still doing the handout just the the more barriers you break down to getting them out the door so if it takes me hand delivering them some bags if that'll well, increase I, the I number of doing it do yeah i mean that's a easy thing to do um allison well you all got your new name tags you can there you go. The That's door. right. Like then still, <laughs> when they peek out, they'll be like, oh, I see that you, you know. Um, <laughs> Allison, can we uh, coordinate the sign-up through your advertising this time around? I mean, I was sending out stuff through the CAC and whatnot, but if we're going to do this more centrally, I think it makes sense to include a sign-up with anything you point out rather than having us put secondary stuff out as well. Sure, and, um, you know, Mm -hmm. And you could just tell me what genre you would like it put through. You know, what link you, know, you wanted to use, like Survey Monkey or something. I mean, what I used, I think it was Google Docs last, or Google Forms last year. Mm -hmm. I don't think that really matters one way or the other. I don't know if it's easier. If, I mean, I know you guys have the town website for signing up for uh, different so events no, and whatnot. Yeah, like, so if that's easy. I don't really care how we do it. Okay. Um, we can get you questions and whatnot to make sure we're collecting the right data. And so whatever is easiest. Okay. So I think that's all we really need at this meeting since we've still got some time on it. Perfect. Okay. Moving on. Uh, this was a holdover from our last meeting, uh, discussion of the open space fund and related financial positions. Um, there were just a few outstanding uh, questions, or not questions, but just wanting to make sure we were all on the same page about fund numbers. Um, Allison, do you have those? Uh, read Allison has them on board. <laughs> I'm here for all you can. Yeah. <laughs> so, um Those are the things this year that will come out of the fund. Right. Um, other than that, I can kind of break some more stuff down if you'd like. Um, in that maintenance line, which also includes Youth Corps and Ashley, there's also like sanitary services for the trailhead bathrooms and um, some um, engineering services will also come. Some of the 
coordination pieces, um, and Jeff and Paige will come out of this budget. Jeff and Paige is going to come out of open space budget? It is going to come out of the open space budget under education. But the ice cream won't. <laughs> I do not have the ice cream <laughs> at this moment, no. That was contentious. Um, the trail improvements is probably the line that um, Track Day will be coming out of, the trail, but I don't just don't have that in mind yet. Um, so I thought track, the track, track Day was included in the, uh, the paving project. I thought the paving project had specific amounts set to that? Are those subject to change as actual costs come in or? Well, until the, um, I don't have notes that the board has awarded. The board awarded that? Yeah. yeah, about a month ago. And I think construction starts this week or next week. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not sure only okay. because I know that there might be road projects that would come before the trail, so, and there, it might be used as a staging area, um, but I didn't have that information as far as Okay. So Allison, where's the Wildflower Park payback then? Where's what? Wild, wildflower Park, the town payback to the Open Space Fund for Wildflower Park? Um, it's a revenue line. Is that the CIP? Loan repayment, CIP. Yeah. Okay, got it. <coughs> so in 2018, there's only 300, I mean, wasn't it a $2 million loan? Or am I not remembering that it right? It was broken out. It was a $3 million. $3 million loan. Right, and so it's they, broken, payment is broken out. So a million so last year, 300,000 this year, and then. And then mm -hmm. that schedule that was up on the top, if you No, that, that was for some bonds. Oh, this, is that the bond? This isn't. Yeah, this isn't it. So um, we don't have the future the future budget payback. I know, so Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. if I'm remembering the budget meetings correctly, well, I believe we pushed million. back one of the payment years. That way we could do some additional projects this year, such as skate park, and I think pickleball had initially been thought of as another project. Right. I, I think we moved it just one year back yeah. and I think the main reason was to get the skate park built okay well that would explain that then yeah. so does anybody have any other questions on our finances um, can someone explain this to me <laughs> this part I, I don't understand this part at all and I, I I don't understand this part of finance very well but if we could understand this there's a lot of um, financees in the top paragraph. So notes were issued in June of 2016. What were th for 3.5 million? So essentially, the town took a loan for three and a half million for open space. I mean, was this for a specific from purchase space. from open space? This is the loan to. Yeah. This is what I'm saying. This is the loan for Purple Park. No. Wildflower Park. Wildflower Park. Sorry. Wildflower. Mm. Park. Um, so we, in 2016, that was the loan, and then this is the payment schedule. Are we, sh it just so doesn't say that. It just says no, tax revenue bonds three million, so that's to acquire three open million. space. See, and I wasn't thinking it was, because it was just a three-year payback period. So, oh, so we're looking at the bonds, little, acquire open space. So I think we're confusing some things here. The bonds were used to acquire open space. We didn't buy anything for three point two million. Chan Chan was. These notes were used to refund well, the town open space wild, revenue. Wildflower was three million, but I'm saying we didn't buy that for open space. We bought Chan Chan for six hundred. Yeah. Our <clears throat> portion was six hundred thousand, right? So do we think this is wildflower or we don't think this is wildflower? I think this is wildflower. I think really? I, but I didn't think it, they were paying it back through two thousand sixteen. Well, unless there's a different financing mechanism as well that's being utilize I mean the yeah well. I mean I did, I did I thought the whole point was not to have to go in issue notes that we had the money in the open space fund and they were just gonna borrow money from the fund so we wouldn't have to 
have have to go through any formal borrowing. And if I'm remembering the interest rate that that they're we were getting in the open space fund was around one percent, not not two point one five. I could be wrong on that, but I could swear that's what I heard the budget meetings. Allison, do you know any more about this? I mean, I don't think we need to re resolve this tonight, but if we could understand this at some point, it'd be good. I would very much appreciate it. And can we go down and look at the rest yeah. of it? Yeah. So we don't have 2018. Well, no, because these are the actuals for the year. Mm -hmm. Not We don't have the budget. That's what she was covering. Yeah. yeah. And we, ha we have that in some notes, and I think we could probably put the details in mm -hmm. the notes. I have them somewhere. Allison sent them to me, so I'll dig those up and send them. I'll make sure they get in the notes. Like Allison read them off, but she's reading what we had in email. Yeah. So we can get the budget line items or items in for 2018. That would be great. So I'm looking at the budget right now, and in 2017, there was a $1.015 million loan repayment, mm -hmm. which is marked as open space revenue. In 2018, 2019, and 2020, there's $343,000 each year okay. marked as open space revenue as projections. Oh, well, so we that broke one sense. year down into three years. And so it was yep. a $2 million loan. It was a $2 million loan. Which is right there. Uh, okay. And I think this, oh, the, $3 million the tax project. revenue yeah. are not the wildflower, do okay. not have the wildflower association. And, and if you look at the, the expenditures, so from open space, in 2016, there was $140,000 spent. In 2017, there's $2.4 million spent. So that explains wild, Wildfire Park. Mm -hmm. And in 2018, 825000 2019, just 100000 is budgeted or projected. And that's for Shanshan, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hundred thousand. But so essentially, our, our fund balance isn't going to grow this year or next year with the current budget. I mean, we're taking in about, like this year we're bringing in about a million and we'll spend about a million. Next year we'll bring in about a million and depending on whatever Shan Shan and the other expenditures cost, could be a wash. For the purposes of working with um, Trust for Public Land, it'd be really nice to have more accurate numbers and estimations. Well, as I mean, well. yeah, I mean, we should put together. Uh, I just don't want to say, oh, we have an estimated, if we uh, it'd be much better to know exactly what we have going on. I mean, I'm sure someone does. The 2017 numbers are accurate. Th those yeah, are, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, it's it, just, I mean, it, it almost seems like, though, with the way we're spending for the next two years, we have $4 million. Seems like that's the right number. Well, no, because we're getting so sales tax is going to be. Yeah, this is about six fifty up here, right? These these four line items, six to six fifty. Okay. Right, right. and then the loan repayment is going to be another million. It's going to be three hundred thousand. Right, but year. but our expenditures in two thousand eighteen are closer to a million, not closer to six fifty. No. Thought they were or eight hundred or something. Oh, yeah. sorry, that's right, that's right, that's right. Eight hundred, that's right. I'm sorry. So it'll grow two hundred. So You're right. Okay, so four point two. I apologize. For and then with Shan Shan, You're right. It may grow a little bit. And track date, depending on where track date or A comes out of. Right. Okay. So yep. four point two up to maybe four point five or something. Yeah, something like the that. Year after. In that region. The uh, Coal Creek enhancements are a large part of the budget. From 2017 and 2018, there's 1.5 million dollars in 2017, and then 825,000 in 2018. Yeah. So, you'll, back in mind, someone asks you, four million is a fairly good estimate. What would it look like? Okay. Four million, and we bring in about 650 in sales tax oh. a year. Okay. But then I guess it's also interesting that some of our a lot of, or a fair number of our expenses aren't actually for open space acquisition. Yeah. 
A lot of maintenance. Mm-hmm. Trail construction. Mm-hmm. <coughs> yeah. Which is a sign of just maturing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. And I would say also part of our you know, mission and charter mm-hmm. of being stewardships of you know, stewards of the land and, and making it accessible. Yeah. Just a quick tangent. The Coal Creek Corridor enhancements, what does that entail exactly? Besides like new tree planting and dredging the creek so it's all I think one that's it. I think those it's two things. Okay. Creek so reconstruction. It, so it doesn't include like adding a, another the underpass or the bridge, um, you know how there's a sidewalk on the one side for the trail, not adding another sidewalk on the other side so we could actually get, uh, okay, all right, just curious. That would be part of the, the parks one and two construction, I believe. Oh, you're talking about all the way over here. Yeah, um, I guess. so we don't have to have a separate bridge. We could have the Coal Creek Trail go on either side then. I don't know if that's included in anything. Okay. I'll read you the description of Coal Creek improvements. If you give me a second. Creek corridor channel enhancements, including flow control and drop structures to stabilize drop the structures. waterway. Mm-hmm. Project in cooperation with urban drainage as a financial participant. Yeah. I don't know if you guys remember if those were, we needed, I think it was four drop structures throughout the. To keep the water. Yeah, flow. to manage the flow. Properly, it's either four or five. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. Okay. So going back to this document, we don't know what the stuff at the top is for page one, right? I'm yeah, sorry. That's what we need clarification. Yeah, we really want to understand what this is. Or one of his analysts. Yeah. So I guess Allison, if you want to do a little more legwork afterwards and let us give us a better idea of what exactly this refers to. Okay. <laughs> This is this document is on our website, so this is a public document right now. So right on the OSAC page, this is um, this is where I got it right from the uh, additional maps and documents. The first one is an open space fund financial summary. Yep, there it is. Great, so uh, I added that yeah. last month after our meeting last month. Awesome! I think it's great. Yeah, thank you yeah. for that. That's wonderful. I think the real. I mean, it's clearly a a, a payoff schedule for our bonds. I think the real question is what were those bonds issued for? Because there's a reference to 2016. I think that's where we're getting lost. So I think that's the outstanding question. Okay. Anybody else have any questions, comments further? No. I'm glad right. we get to review that one though. All right. Thank you for pulling that together, Allison. All right. 76th Street Parcel. Uh, again, Follow on from last time. Basically, we didn't do anything, so we didn't have quorum. I believe where we ended, and please, everybody and anybody, correct me if I'm wrong, was we were going to look for board input on whether this is something that they want us to do more legwork on, worth pursuing. There's a structure on the property right now. Uh, it was kind of outside our typical purview. I think that's where we ended. And Sean saw today that the price got reduced, what, 50000 Oh, the Marshall Road? Yeah, 50000 Yep. Can, can, can I just in, interject first? So I found something on the uh, the bonds. Yeah. So it's in the budget on page 169 of 300. Uh, open Space Debt Service Fund description. In November of 2005, residents voted for the town to purchase natural open space area bonds. With this, the town's debt can be increased $12 million with the repayment cost not to exceed $22.5 million in order to preserve open space and natural areas. Debt repayment is to be paid through the 0.3% open space sales and use tax approved in the November 2001 election. Notes were issued in June of 2016 with a principal total amount of $3.55 million at 2.15% interest. These notes will be used to refund the town open space sales and use tax revenue bonds from 2006. Oh, so we were basically just refinancing. We're refinancing existing debt. Refinancing, refinancing to, better, debt. to a better interest. Right. Right. Okay, that makes sense. The bonds were used to acquire open space slash build trails. Okay. 
But does that mean we have extra money for open space, or this is just open space that's already been purchased and we're paying back that debt? Yes. Mark, what page was that? 169. Thank you. That makes more sense. <clears throat> Thank you, Mark. Okay. So 76th Street parcel. Is this something we still want to bring to the board and what do we want to ask? Well, we also of? discussed though seeing if the town could sniff out with Louisville. Oh, to that's see right, that's Louisville, right, that's right. Well, Louisville and probably Boca. Yeah, Boca I don't County know. Have to be involved in that. I mean, I, my, it doesn't sound like that's happened. No, um, we, we couldn't do that because the board hadn't directed staff to, to spend time working on that project, which is why we would have needed to bring that to the board to see if we get the board to direct staff. Oh. <laughs> if I'm right, is that what I'm recalling correctly from last month? No. I mean, Allison, you're, you couldn't... I think, where we, I think where we landed is we said, is there any way that you as staff or somebody else in the, in the department can reach out to Louisville and Boulder County to see if this parcel would be a good partnership opportunity potentially as a, a trail connector or something from Davidson Mesa. And I, I thought the, the answer was that you guys couldn't do that because you hadn't been directed by the board to do something like that. Well, I think it would be a recommendation to the board to um, work on if, if the board wanted to pers pursue this parcel. I think we're at the point where we need to just put in a recommendation to ask the board is, is what we would consider more, I wanna say urban, but like more interior parcels or something that they want to pursue. Well, can I interject real quickly? <coughs> Kate, do you know where this parcel is? Oh, yeah. sorry. Otherwise we can, someone can send it to you. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Nope, nope, this is number three on our trails list, connection to Davidson Mesa underpass. So that would mean that people would basically come out from that underpass from 36, uh, turn, go across oh, sorry, Mesa. Sorry, I'm, I'm messing this one up with the other one, sorry, in my head. I'm yeah. messing that one up with She's that She's thinking one. the third one. Oh, third Yeah, street. third. Yeah. You know, no, no, you're right, so the 76. But I think we were... We were just at, we didn't have forum last time. So right. we didn't have to make a real This real also has a building on it, so that was another. So the other thing was that, it, and it was a nice so building. Not a, it's a nice house that's right. on there. So I think we're just at the point that we, you know, just make a recommendation, right? Did people feel that? We just didn't have enough people last time to have the full discussion and decide on the recommendation. So it kind of ties in with the 76th Street property, sort of, but it's more in line with the connection to Davidson Mesa underpass to the, uh, what's the name of the trail that we Mayhofer. connect to? Thank you, Mayhoffer Trail. Either, <coughs> not necessarily even just purchase of a whole property, we just even, if it gets purchased by somebody, having some kind of a conservation easement that goes behind it so that people on their bikes could go up. So I don't know if you guys have gone down Marshall lately, but you can actually get onto Boco property, go up the road, go onto Boco property where it looks like there's a nice pre-built ridge that goes mm -hmm. up to that. And then there's like a, a fence or something that blocks it off. But if there's an easement that goes through the back of that property, then it would cross and then go back onto Boco property to go to Mayhoff. So my only concern from looking at it and looking at the map that trail is so close to that house. I mean, it's it probably is, it is very close to the house. That is, that is the I don't only see issue. how anyone would ever hit that rural wanting an easy access to your backyard. That would, I, we could try. I, would, I wouldn't go for it. Right. I would also say, just listening to the land trust thing we had, I don't think we can put a, like, I don't think that's what the conservation easement is for. That, I mean, he was pretty clear that, you know, that's generally, you know, from that oh, from Crested Grand Butte Island. one, like, nobody's allowed on it. It just, it just means it's not going to be developed beyond a certain point. So I don't know that that easement, you know, my understanding now of listening to him talk, I don't know that we could 
ask for a conservation easement on that property for that purpose of allowing people to basically right. cross it. I'm not an expert on conservation easements, but I know that some are open to public use. So I would, I don't know. I don't know yeah, what don't option. Know. Well, I'm just saying, listening to what he said. And I, don't know, I certainly, I'm not an expert and don't have the full thing, but I don't know that some, I'm just thinking from a private citizen's perspective, I wouldn't buy a property that I would say, wait a minute, you, you could say 100 people could come through my yard at any given moment to use this trail. Right, <laughs> but look at- also that mm -hmm. um, ditch, that cold- The cold mm -hmm. ditch. Ditch mm -hmm. that would maybe complicate some things. Yeah. Just to, just to, just to, well, no, add. actually, you can, there is a, there is a crossing. Um, if you keep going down Boco, you can, it's on the map, you can yeah. go to Google Maps. There is a crossing that's a, I think a utility crossing um, that people could bike down to and cross there to get to the other side. Just, and yeah, they go ahead. Yeah, just to offer two things. Um, this was not in the 76th Street parcels when we submitted our open space summary report. We purposely excluded these two properties. I thought... Oh, did we? we yeah. That's the decision. That's the way we went because they weren't originally in there. I don't know if that's going to cause an issue. But I think the bigger issue is that Louisville's already presented, Patrick presented to us the plans that Louisville has for plant or for trails all through here. So it doesn't seem like this makes much sense without Louisville being involved. Oh, really? I mean, they're so far right. down where the trails would yeah. be and how the access would be. Yeah. It's more just making them aware that it's available mm -hmm. and we might be interested and working with them, um, but I don't know how we, what we do to facilitate that. I mean, you would think they would know, but maybe they don't. Make a recommendation to the board to reach out to Louisville, what are they, po POSAB or whatever? To explore To explore options. if they would like to consider yeah, co-purchasing yeah. with ourselves and other entities to make this property or a portion trail of trail access to. During Patrick's presentation, did you uh, do you guys recall if this water facility and, and there was like a trail connection near the water facility? Did I send you the Did I send you the latest continuity document? If I did, it has the map. It has the plans in there. There are three um, different trails. If I remember correctly. Yeah, no, it's. I just have it on my computer. I just don't have it to put up over here. Oh, yeah. Do you need them both? I just want to add, I understand what you're saying, Trish, about a private citizen, but this is a unique location, and they've already dropped it 50 grand. No, I'm not saying, you know I'm I mean? just saying, like, I, my thought is oh, we're yeah, just at you. the point where do we make a recommendation right. or not? I'm with like, you. Yeah. Like, I'm I not, I'm just you. saying, I, <laughs> you know, we make the recommendation, <laughs> see the board's appetite, and then go from there. I was just making the point. I do, you know, <laughs> I think there's unique ways to fund, and this might be one that, you know, would fall under that unique way of funding. I'm just, or not. Or not. <laughs> but that's why we're looking to the experts think, to say you well, could get this here or not here. I think what Patrick Now was to an exorbitant expense to create for that, and this is just a, I'm just presenting this as an alternative solution that benefits Superior, Louisville, Boco, where there's already a crossing farther down to the other side to get to the trail. There you go. So <laughs> it was a year ago when you presented this. Oh. I yeah, it's pretty. If you would hit the lights, please, you can see. So the property is right here. Right. That we're and looking so at. The green trail is what I. Yeah, there's a crossing right here. There's exactly. like a road, and yeah. there's a crossing. I mean, it's a. Be a pretty ideal spot to get into that trail. It would be, and what could happen is you buy the property and then resell it after you create some kind of a, I don't know, zone or easement, but put it back on the market. As so that you don't have to destroy the house that's in place, but already knowing that whoever buys it is going to have that behind their house. I mean, you said it's really close. Who knows? Maybe there's there's could be a use for that house. I mean, <laughs> depending on. I might be able to use it. Yeah, I mean. 
Well, it's, I, mean, it's, what, 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 I mean, it's not going to hurt to put feelers out. So I think, I think we should. So we recommend to the board. All right, so we recommend to the town board that staff be directed to explore possible partnership opportunities with Louisville and Boulder County to purchase 7440 Marshall Road as a uh, connection, uh, as a way to connect Davidson Mesa underpass to the Mayhoffer Trail uh, to facilitate. Access. To provide access. To provide access. Provide access. Uh, staff be directed to explore possible partnership opportunities with Louisville and Boulder County to purchase 7440 Marshall Road that would provide access from the Davidson Mesa underpass to the Myhoffer Trail. Do we want to add Boulder County in there or should we just start with Louisville? I have, oh, I have Louisville, Louisville and Boulder County. Okay, sorry, my bad. Yep. Anything else we want to add to that? We also want to maybe enlist the help of uh, the Trust for Public Land to help us facilitate. Mm -hmm. No? No, we do, but I don't know if we should put that in there because we already put that in the different recommendations. I mean, so if we, if maybe, we maybe once we get to that point. I mean, we could we could add them. We could say explore possible partnership opportunities with Louisville, Boulder County, and the Trust for Public Land if we wanted to. Sure, it's another four benefit special that will reduce the cost. And worst comes to worst, somebody says no. It doesn't hurt that we have it in here. All right, so rereading from the top. <clears throat> we recommend to the town board that staff be directed to explore possible partnership opportunities with Louisville, Boulder County, and the Trust for Public Lands to purchase 7440 Marshall Road to provide access from the Davidson Mesa underpass to the Mayhoffer Trail. I had land, and then I was like, is that right? And I threw the S on there. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. I make a motion uh, to recommend to the board, uh, as previously read. Second. Any additional discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. All right. Allison, I'll add this to the list. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to the Third Avenue property. This is the one that was more uh, urban into uh, original town. Now, the interesting thing is, I don't think there's any more structure on that. No, I, I saw the trailer much. pulling out of pulling the building out of there. So mm -hmm. Th they saw it in half. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Um, it was you go by there and you can see they kind of had it jacked up on wheels and then I just happened to be going over the 36 and saw it pulling wide load onto 36 and away it went. So what do we want to do? <laughs> I think, Man. like I said, we're in the same boat of we didn't have quorum last time. Yeah. It's, it's like I think we have to judge the board's appetite for this was my statement beforehand of, like, of purchasing internal, what I would call internal properties. But it, so. anymore it may not be internal because it backs up to other or, superior open space at that point. But it is. But it's more residential. No, it's, I, it, I, it would be easy to come in and build a house that a house would fit in there. Yeah. Because it's right next to other house, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a lot. I concerned we might be. Are we sending too much? That's a good point. True. The that I don't know. I did not see it for sale. I still drove by. I. 
shelves the email we got from Gladys that said it's for sale. But you know what, was, though? She, that was old information she was giving us, though. There was another piece of property over there that is for sale that's a much smaller lot. Sean, you, you found it. I remember you, there were some aerial pictures of it, but it was a different lot, uh, and it was a different spot, I think. No. I mean, it's, it's bought by someone. It's probably going to be developed by someone. It's already zoned for residential housing, I'm guessing. So it would be an uphill battle well, to try and. Let's just keep an eye on it. Yeah. yeah. It's a moot point at this point. Yeah. So no recommendation, but let's keep an eye on it. Okay. Beautiful. All right. That finishes all of our items. On to uh, updates and look ahead. It's nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, as we were yeah. pulling this together, I was like, yeah. I was just like, we had so much that still carried on from the prior one, and we had a lot of stuff that we needed to get through anyway. Yeah. We did and, good. Yeah. We did good, actually. Uh, so, Boulder County updates. Um, we could probably take Hodgson Harris Reservoir off of that and just say wildlife enhancement encouragement activities. Allison, do you have any updates on wildlife enhancement and encouragement activities from Boulder? I, I went on their website, and actually, if somebody wanted to take this item under their wing, um, there's on their website, if you just go to Boulder County Wildlife, there are so many different um, topics they touch on, and if somebody was really interested in this item and kind of went through their website and just looked at all the different things, and then, you know, maybe brought it back to the group on what they were you know felt that they were really interested in and um, maybe got some feedback from the group so no update <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I you know I guess it depends on what area the group is the most interested in because they're doing so much um, I guess that's more the question of honing down. That's a good point, yeah. So this is in regard to above and beyond what we already have programmed for this year. Other ideas, is that where we're trying to get from this? Mm -hmm. The genesis of this is we've had wildlife enhancement encouragement activities on our work plan for since I've been on. It's morphed from pronghorn to antelope to what the heck are we trying to encourage? We need some expert advice. And we had sent, my understanding is we had had communication with Boulder County and we were gonna get some input from them to make sure whatever we did made sense for our area, that we were trying to do the right, whether it's Not invite invasive, spe invasive species, and like we were just saying like, do the right thing. Yeah. Right. We, we want to make sure any task that we went forward with was the right task. And mm -hmm. those were the experts that I think we ultimately were referred to. And also on that page is um, they have so many reports on different items. I mean, I'm happy so to much undertake that if someone else doesn't want to do it. Just review it and then I'll bring some info back and say, hey, here's all the stuff they're doing. Are we interested in any of that to find out if that's feasible for our area? Does that sound cool? Great. And I can send awesome. you that link because Perfect. I looked through it and I was just like, oh my gosh, there's so much information here. They're doing so many things. Great. So we'll talk about that again next month. So Tracy, when we get to this next month, I'll just turn this standing update over to you to lead then. So Allison, is it my understanding then that we are just not to expect a response from Boulder County then? I think we could probably get a response if we maybe Home narrow day. down yeah. some of the options i mean i pat I, I, reaching to the memory banks i'm pretty sure patrick had reached out to somebody or talked to somebody in boulder county like six months ago god it could have been longer whenever we started these standing updates because that's because we were waiting <laughs> that's why it's been a standing update waiting for them to get back to us um Yeah, so, I mean, it's not the, I thought, my understanding is we had made this communication, 
Boulder County had said, we will get back to you, and we've been waiting for Boulder County to get back to us. And I think it was kind of in conjunction with the Hodgson-Harris Reservoir Ecological Study right around the same time we started doing that. And um, it took a long time to get that back. And um, when I talked to Patrick, they hadn't followed up on the total area wildlife enhancements but more the specific area of Hodgson Harris and so they combined our two requests into just Hodgson Harris so we shouldn't expect anything else from them okay so Tracy we'll turn this over to you cool all right Joel Wait, one thought there real quick, sorry, but from, we should look at that Hodgson Harris report again because they, I think maybe they had some encouragement potential or some things we could do in there. Or maybe it wasn't, maybe I'm thinking of something else, but you know, I'll, I'll, t- I'll take that one. I'll go look at that and see. Or maybe it's from the, from the community talking about wanting to put up some bird nesting oh, habitats bird, or something. Bird houses and, in the middle of Reservoir yeah, maybe that was from uh, residents and not from that report that I'm remembering. That'd be an Audubon thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We even talked about bats, bat boxes one year. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that was probably four years ago. Yeah, it was a while back. Okay. Sorry. No. Uh, two things around the Rocky Mountain Greenway. Um, one is, uh, I, I think just about everybody saw it, but I put together kind of a talking points. Um, mm-hmm document that we had at the Nationals Trail Day. I plan on just keeping that around as a living document as things are happening, um, you know, or, or kind of come to conclusion. We'll, we'll kind of move those off, and I'll keep that up to date for different events, you know, Chili Fest, things like that. So if you want to send that to me, I can put it in our Dropbox. Okay. If you want, and yep. just whenever there's an update, I'll just throw yep. it in there. Absolutely. If that works. Um, and then kind of on the same vein, um, her name escapes me. Was it Tammy? The uh, she was Tammy's a, Tammy Story. Yeah, she was a candidate oh, yeah. for um, Colorado. District. Mm-hmm. Tracy knows it all. Wow. Sixteen. 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 <laughs> uh, she she was at Trails Day. We we had um, good discussion with her, kind of about the stance of Superior, and I think we actually kind of yeah, kind of talked to her a little bit about some things that maybe she hadn't considered about. Uh, the Rocky Flats area, the Rocky Mountain Greenway, and some connections. Um, just, you know, pretty uh, pretty interesting discussion with her and uh, let her kind of know what our uh, viewpoints on it were from a municipality. As a side note, she may come just for public comment at an upcoming meeting, um, so it might be nice to have a government, hopefully government official, um, and share further reinforcement cool and the lawsuit was refiled and yeah so was there it's being I, I think there was a milestone this Monday right uh, that, that there had there was a decision that had to be made oh, man I saw it in one of the articles I can't remember what it was I think the government's response to the motion for a preliminary yes. injunction was due but then the plaintiffs will have the opportunity to file a reply. Okay. So it's not fully briefed, and then once it's fully briefed, then the judge will rule on it. Okay. Do we have anything on Shan Shan this month? Guessing? No. 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 Yes. We're going to have to reassign that. Mm. It's we'll true. do that at the next meeting. Yeah. Okay, uh, and then finally, the pros newsletter. Um, what we have written down here is what we included uh, in the newsletter that went out. It did go out, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's going out, and I did add another appointment. Perfect. Oh, Vanessa, Vanessa. okay. Mm-hmm. So Great. I did tweak the language. Okay. So I, I took notes on what we could put in next week, started discussion with the Trust for Public Land, something around that, reviewed the Anderson property for connectivity and wildlife corridor, and uh, cleanup event planning, logistics moving forward. So those were the three big ones that I thought made sense in there. Anything 
else that I missed or think we might want to add? I think those sound good. Mm. Okay. All right. Anybody else have uh, any I've final? got two things. Please. One, um, if you guys want to have a presence at July 4th, you should s schedule that via email over the next couple of weeks. July 4th. Oh, That's <laughs> right. That should have been. Oh, let that one. So. Thank you. So July 4th, add that. And then, do I get all the clamped? I don't know. <laughs> rewritten this like six times so it might not even make any more sense so there you go <laughs> so I just want to say I've really enjoyed my time my tenure on the committee for the last five years I've been privileged to be here for the Hodges and Harris Reservoir project the start of National Trails Day purchasing Shan Shan increasing um, community education and engagement I want to say thank you to Allison I always say this but I'm gonna repeat it again we come up with the great ideas, but Allison executes them, mm -hmm. and she makes us look good doing it. So, um, and just as a little side note, I've been on here long enough to both uh, to have Allison, Patrick, and Martin as staff liaisons for this committee. Um, I want to thank Mark and and Sandy, who was on previously. Will I've been on here for your guidance to the group as well as the rest of the board for the opportunity. Um, finally, welcome to the new members. You're joining a great group, and I wish you all the best in the future. Thank you. Nice to see us. I will. <laughs> I will. No. I'll I think, come up at, you know, during things and heckle you. You should. At events. <laughs> and I know that we all thank you for everything you've done, Trish, and you're really going to be missed. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, thank your, you. Your leadership and knowledge is going to be greatly, greatly missed. Well, Thank you, so you guys much. all know how to find me. We're not really going anywhere. You know. <laughs> You're still on the committee until the end of the month, so don't forget that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, good <laughs> <laughs> So, thank you. I also have one question for Mark. Anything more on Town 15 and the board? Has that been touched on at all? Because I know I've heard different things about there's a lot of interest in Town 15 from different pockets, so... Can I ask a couple of things before you answer? <laughs> um, it's been mentioned on the CAC um, uh, in regards again to the rec center, even though everything is happening over here um, and with a ballot initiative. And um, Chris, meant, Chris Hansen mentioned something about, is there any possibility of us using um, open space fund to buy the town 15 from the town and then using that fund to pay for parks one and two. So I was just curious about all of that. Um, so I think to answer your last question, because town 15 is already owned by the town, uh, I think that that was just kind of like he was thinking, thinking outside the box, and and just thinking out loud. Um, and I think the uh, discussion that night was, you know, the open space funds should be used to acquire new parcels that are not owned by the land, by the town. So um, there wasn't much appetite towards using the fund to acquire something from the town, and then you know, essentially conserving it that way. Um, with respect to like anything related to like a rec center on the on the town 15 you know there's still discussions about that and i think the the board is somewhat split on the idea of whether or not the town 15 should be where like an eventual rec center should go or something else should happen to the town 15. i think for purposes of right now where we are and the ballot question so there's a, a meeting scheduled for next Tuesday night here at Town Hall, uh, the 19th, I think it is, uh, related to the, the plans that we have prepared for the rec center, rec slash community center. The purpose of that meeting is kind of to gauge, you know, the public sentiment on, you know, what people think, what people think if, should we do this at all? You know, whether the finances make sense. And then second, whether the design makes sense, whether there's any tweaks to the design. Um, if there is you know, sufficient support and consensus at the meeting, um, we're gonna go forward with some surveys and you know, more public outreach 
you know, surveys and phone calls to individual residents to see, uh, you know, what they would think about a ballot initiative and whether or not sales tax, property tax, or a combination of the two is a possibility for funding this thing. Because under Tabor, we can't um, you know, increase taxes without a, a, a ballot question. So that's the whole purpose of going to the voters. So ultimately, this thing's not going to get built unless the voters buy in. But the question is, do we want to even go to that step and actually go to the voters if we have the public outreach meetings, do the surveys, and we find out that unequivocally everybody's against this and this is a terrible idea. We don't want to waste everybody's time uh, going to the voters. So I think right now, to answer your question, Town 15 is not really front and center because the focus is on this particular opportunity, which kind of came to the board um, organically through the sports stable and impact sports and you know, talking about a partnership and whether we could structure things in such a way that we'd be able to build what we want to build and then have our residents take advantage of you know the various amenities that are offered at the sports table as like a package deal so you'd get ice time you get the access to the fields um you know separate and apart from having it in like a standalone facility that we would all own ourselves so that's kind of where we're at which is a long-winded and rambling answer I think maybe once we get past the rec center, community center discussion and see what the path forward is on that, because the, the the board's not going to do anything until they know what's going on there. Well, then there's also the library debate, too. Yeah. And and frankly, there, there will be nothing done on Town 15 by the current board. So until That's there's true. an election and there's three new trustees, you know, then there's a discussion on the Town 15, it's an excellent just point. practically speaking. In a dream world, by that time, Justin will have great, beautiful, creative ideas for yeah. us on what we can do with every property. If we're living in a dream world, we would have already purchased CenturyLink, but sorry. Uh, All right, we're living in this total yeah. dream world. <laughs> All right. Any other final comments, questions? Beautiful. All right, yeah, grab, grab your cookies and everything. Meeting.